suicide attack against the Islamic State fighters on the outskirts of the town of Ain al-Arab. According to the Syrian Observer for Human Rights, the attacks killed a number of fighters from the Islamic State, though exactly how many remains unclear. The attacker was a commander in an all-female YPG unit. Weeks of fighting for Ain al-Arab has put the Islamic State on the outskirts of the key Kurdish border town and have the Kurds increasingly desperate in trying to turn the tide. The YPG militias have dominated the Syrian Kurdish territories throughout the civil war, fighting against the Islamic State along the frontier. It is unclear if the new suicide bombing represents a shift in tactics or is an isolated incident. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Associated Press reports a one-time death row inmate now serving a life sentence for a 1981 murder of a Philadelphia police officer spoke to students graduating from a Vermont college on Sunday, encouraging them to strive to transform the world. Mumia Abu-Jamal spoke by video to 20 students receiving bachelor degrees from Godard College in Plainfield. He earned a degree from the college in 1996. Godard College describes him as an award-winning journalist who chronicles the human condition. But the decision to allow Mumia Abu-Jamal to speak angered police and corrections officials in Vermont and Pennsylvania. The Vermont Troopers Association said it showed a disregard for the victim's family at a time when the nation is seeking solutions to gun violence. Godard, a low residency school where students, staff, and faculty spend eight days on campus twice a year, holds 20 commencement ceremonies every year so students in each degree program can individualize their graduations and choose their speaker. Godard said students design their own curriculums with faculty advisors and do not take tests or receive grades. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court opens a new term in which the nine justices will decide issues such as whether a Muslim prison inmate can have a beard and whether a man can be prosecuted for making threatening statements on Facebook. The term, which runs to the end of June, is expected to be defined by whatever action the justices take on whether states can ban gay marriage. They have not yet agreed to hear any of the seven cases already decided by federal appeals courts. Most legal experts expect them to decide the issue with oral arguments early next year and a ruling likely in late June. Arguments start today in the cases the court has already accepted. It has agreed to hear a number of cases involving people challenging their treatment by the government, whether it be prosecutors, police, or agencies. Arkansas inmate Gregory Holt's challenge to a state prison grooming policy will be heard tomorrow. Holt, who initially got the court's attention with a handwritten plea last year, says the policy violates a federal law giving religious rights to prisoners. Holt's lawyers note that 44 state prison systems and the federal government allow inmates to have similar beards. Legal experts predict he has a good chance of victory. The Facebook threat case to be argued on December 1st concerns Anthony Alonis, who posted statements on the social network in 2010 after his wife left him. The legal question is whether prosecutors needed to convince jurors that Alonis intended his statements to be interpreted as threats. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Republicans back a plan for universal lawn care, and an RC car works up the courage to approach a group of girls. And now a recap of the week's news for those who like to waste their summers surfing the internet. Fall, the long-running series of shorter days and cooler nights, was canceled this week after nearly three billion seasons on Earth. The classic period of the year, which once occupied the coveted slot between summer and winter, will be replaced by new stifling humidity levels and near-constant sunshine. 
a shiny, bobbing object in the water is generating fascination among members of the fish community, who have described it as pleasingly wiggly and minnow-esque. Aquatic experts say that decisive action must be taken against the object very soon. In local news, just when 27-year-old Andrew Sheets didn't think his vacation could get any better, a rerun of Spin City came on. And in other headlines, a bee stuck between the screen and front door is going f nuts. And a water skier lets go of the crossbar to greet those not currently water skiing. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free, and bring up anything that you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype again, because we've been gone for the last couple days in uh, Florida for Coins in the Kingdom. Came back today, uh, flew back from Orlando and a, on a uneventful flight. And let's see. So you can contact us toll free at 855 450 free. We've also got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Derek J joining Mark and Ian back in the studio. Hey, Derek. Hey, good to be with you guys. Is that a new hat? Because it looks so bright and so orange. Yeah, zing. It's from Porkfest. Oh, I've really? just kept it in good shape. Yeah, it does look great. I got a new hat this weekend uh, the Rebel Bitcoin logo. I don't know if you've seen the uh, the Rebel Bitcoin logo that Donnie Parker Oh yeah, Parker those made. are slick. Mark is wearing the shirt. If you're watching the cam, you can uh, you can see it probably at cam.freetalklive.com. Uh, I love the shirt so much. Dobby Barker from shinybadges.com uh, had created this, and I think for I think for Bitcoin Nut Bombs, but I'm not really sure if, uh, who officially is selling if it's Shiny Badges or Bitcoin Nut Bombs. But anyway, I think it's a really cool logo. It's got the Bitcoin B inside the word rebel and then the circle going around the, the B. And uh, Davi has come out with a hat version of that same logo, uh, which both the shirt and the hat seem to be very good sellers at the Bitcoin conference uh, that we were at this weekend. So Really cool. Yeah. They look great in a photo. I agree. And uh, so picked up some new gear and uh, it was a good time uh, had by all. And apparently we didn't know this last night, but apparently it was so successful. They're already planning the next one. Oh, so, yay. Yeah. yeah, I was glad to uh, glad to hear that. So, again, coinsinthekingdom.com if you want to learn where we have been for the past two days. Maybe you're just tuning in uh, for the first time. Our toll-free number, again, is 855-450-FREE. There's news about Uber, or at least some claims about Uber, by a socialist magazine, some sort of uh, print quarterly called The Jacobin. And that's where this story appeared we almost had a chance to take Uber this weekend. Still haven't done it yet. Uh, Derek J., have you ever used Uber or Lyft? Yes. And what was your experience as a customer? Oh, I loved it. My first time taking Uber, I thought it was like some luxury car thing of the future. You know, mm. there was like a, you know, they had a fancy black car and a driver who, you know, came around and opened the door. And I was like, what kind of taxi is this? And, uh, you know, <laughs> I didn't realize what it was at the time. But then once I had heard all the news stories about Uber, I said, oh, OK. So that was just some more professional guy than you know my neighbor. <laughs> it was just some just guy in a suit. Somebody looking to share his car. And yeah. Take you, take you places. So I yeah. think it's, you know, I've been fascinated by Uber and Lyft and uh, the news that has surrounded these companies which has mostly been about how the governments of you know different cities, for instance, in some cases state governments, have been really coming down hard on these companies and the drivers. There's one story where drivers were being ticketed. I forget which city this was, but it, you know, it could be your city. Was it at Denver? Baltimore, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, was, they were ticketing people $6,000 for operating their Uber cars. Seems fair. <laughs> no, it's horrifying. <laughs> And the After reason, all, they're destroying Western civilization. <laughs> well, the reason the reason they're doing this is because the taxi companies and the taxi cabbies who have you know these unions and have been protected by the government for a long time from competition are very upset that there's these new upstarts in the marketplace and they're bringing fresh ideas to the forefront and they're competing and they hate that and so and punish them. They've. They've paid for protection. They've been paying for years for protection from the government. They've been, you know, in some cases, these taxi medallions are hundreds of thousands of dollars to get one medallion just for one car. It's just shocking how anyone could even do business with overhead like that. But in a restricted environment like New York City or Philadelphia or all, you know, any other city, they all have these restrictions. 
in these restrictive environments, it's uh, you know it it's protectionism. They they don't have that many com- competitors. The com- competition is limited, and uh, and they're enforced upon. In some places, they'll arrest you for uh, for doing business without a license, for taking someone somewhere without a government permission slip. There was the old man in his seventies who was uh, arrested back in Florida. I think it was the Miami area for giving a girl a ride home from the grocery store. Turns out she was an undercover cop. Uh, she just demanded that he take right. a few he bucks for gas. He, he didn't want she, it. She wanted to hand him five bucks, and he wouldn't take it. She kept pushing until he finally, you know, just because, all right, lady, I'll take your money. What a crook. And then, yeah. And then they busted him for it. It was horrifying. And this is why I'm interested in this article you have about uh, Uber is because when you're talking about a socialist magazine, it, it really sort of makes me wonder. Oftentimes people, you know, socialist a so, uh, somebody writing for a socialist magazine is really socialist. They're not yes. a little bit socialist. They don't fit the definition of, like, your average American who's socialist. They're <laughs> really socialist, right? Absolutely. So they, um, they're they going to be, like, I, I would think that this would be a difficult issue for them because in one case it's like stick it to the man socialism, right? Um, mm. It's uh, Well, it, Uber know, is the man. To something the, the something author, new yeah. and different. Uh, you know, so this is this is exciting. It's it's an innovation. I think that in many cases you can find socialists that like that power to the people, as it were. Mm. They and, say that's an illusion. I'll get you in, I'll get you into the story here. Uh, I read through it earlier. It's from well, it was actually reprinted on BillMoyers.com, but it's originally from Jacobin, which their website is JacobinMag.com. Kazi drives a tro- uh, Toyota Prius for Uber in Los Angeles. He hates it. He barely makes minimum wage, and his back hurts after long shifts. But every time a passenger asks what it's like working for Uber, he lies. He says, it's like owning my own business. I love it. Kazi lies because his job depends on it. After passengers finish a ride, Uber asks them to rate their driver on a scale from 1 to 5 stars. Drivers with an average below 4.7 can be deactivated. That's tech speak for fired. Gabriel Lopez, an L.A. Uber driver, also lies. She says, we just sit there and smile and tell everyone that the job's awesome because that's what they want to hear. Said Lopez, who's been driving for Uber X, the company's low-end car service, since it launched last summer. In fact, if you ask Uber drivers off the clock what they think of the company, it often gets ugly fast. Uber's like an exploiting pimp, said Armand, an Uber driver in L.A., who asked me to withhold his last name out of fear of retribution. He says Uber takes 20% of my earnings. Because of all the uh, Uber drivers in L.A. named Armand? Uber takes 20% of my earnings, and they treat me like S. They cut prices whenever they want. They can deactivate me whenever they feel like it. And if I complain, they tell me to F off. In L.A., San Francisco, Seattle, and New York, tension between drivers and management has bubbled over in recent months. And even though Uber's business model uh, has uh, discourages collective action, each worker is technically in competition with each other, some drivers are banding together. Uber drivers in L.A., the largest ride-sharing market in the country, held dozens of protests over the summer to oppose rate cuts. Last uh, Late last month, drivers working with Teamsters Local 986 launched the California App-Based Drivers Association, or CADA, C-A-D-A, a sort of Uber drivers union. I think there's nothing wrong with uh, drivers getting together and uh, unionizing and, uh, you know, bringing their issues forward to Uber. Uber workers in Seattle. But they're not employees. I mean, I, I, you know, I think that's, that's a they're, different thing. They're private contractors. Yeah, they're people that are working with Uber. And... Every single day, they make a decision to do that. Uber workers in Seattle have staged their own protests and have formed the Seattle Ride Share Drivers Association. Excellent. Just last week in New York City, drivers for the luxury Uber Black service threatened to strike and successfully reversed a company decision that would have forced them to pick up cheaper and less lucrative Uber X rides. On Monday, drivers protested again. Quote, we want the company to understand that we're not just ants said Joseph DeWolf, a member of CADA's leadership council. He told me that at the Teamsters Union Hall in El Monte, California, quote, what we want is a living wage, an open channel of communication with the company, and basic respect, unquote, said DeWolf. Said CADA is signing up members, collecting dues, and plans to strike in L.A. if Uber refuses to come to the negotiating table. 
It won't be easy. Drivers are going up against a burgeoning Goliath valued at around $18 billion. The company just hired David Plouffe, who managed Barack Obama's presidential campaigns. It's You know, I'm, I'm wondering of this living wage thing. Now, it's my understanding that Uber drivers get 80% of the fare, right? That's correct. Okay. So, and they were protesting a diminishment in fees. The fare's been dropped. Now, I would assume that the reason they're dropping the fare is because they're competing against Lyft and a variety of other rideshare That's programs. Correct. I've got the numbers here on what the fare was and what it is now and how difficult apparently that's making some people's lives. Plus, we've got an Uber driver who's on the line who wants to talk about this. Coming up okay. here in moments, 855 450 free. Share your thoughts. You work for Uber or Lyft? What do you think? Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep because someone broke into her apartment and stole all her sheep, not to mention a 50-inch flat-screen TV. Luckily, the Geico Insurance Agency had helped her with renter's insurance, and she got full replacement. She has since trained her sheep to do voice impressions of various attack dogs and now feels very safe. Visit geico.com to see how affordable renter's insurance can be. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Email is easy, instant, and free, and that can be real embarrassing. Email lacks the eye contact and body language you get in face-to-face -face conversation, or the tone of voice and other nuance you hear in a telephone conversation. Email is just words, often few words. We're all smothering in spam, so we often reply in terse fashion that's easy to misunderstand. And email doesn't cost you a postage stamp, and it lacks the deliberation time it'd take to walk to the snail mailbox so it's easy to succumb to the oh yeah stimulus response trap when in doubt don't snap back at snippy messages you get you may have mistaken the sender's intent and unless you're sending AOL to AOL there's no unsend for more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now hit survivalspeech.com I'm Holland Cook if you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
It's Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. Is Uber all it's cracked up to be? That's what uh, one of our users submitted right there to the front page of our website. Username C41N uh, submitted this to uh, through our Reddit-based system. You can do the same thing. You submit whatever content you want. You find it online. It doesn't have to be show prep necessarily. It could be just a cool YouTube video. Whatever you think is interesting, what you think we'll like, our listeners will appreciate. Because since it's Reddit-based, it then gets votes. We'll receive votes to vote up or vote down. Uh, so I saw this and I thought, gosh, we got to talk about this because Uber, you know, everything sounds great when you look at Uber. When you hear about the business idea of competing with the old school, old guard taxi services, bringing much needed competition into the marketplace of getting a ride somewhere. I, I think that's exciting. And I also got the impression the people who work for Uber are thrilled with it, right? Yeah. Like, I, I got it, um, and I can see why they, you know, some drivers feel that it's necessary to, um, uh, you know, to, to do things like fib about what their attitude is towards the company. Uh, I get it, because, you know, oftentimes, as, as an employee, you tend to do better if you have a better attitude. Sure. And some days you don't have a good attitude, and so you have to kind of fake it till you make it. Is that a lie, or is it a technique for having a better day? I don't know the answer to that, but there's certainly better companies and worse companies to work for. Yeah, well, so some of the drivers here in this article by Jacobin Magazine are saying is that they've lied to their customers when asked how the job is. You know, the idea, I think, being that if they tell the truth and they say, well, it sucks working for Uber, I don't like it, that maybe that will uh, make it so that customer won't want to come back if they know they're you know, they're, uh, if, if they know that these experiences for the drivers aren't good, why would they want to be a part of that experience? But, but this isn't unique to Uber. Any place that you work, your boss is going to expect you to wear a smile and sure. be friendly to the customers. And if they ask, how are you doing today? You don't say, well, <laughs> let me tell you, I've had a week. And technically, you, they you're don't supposed a... to say, it's great. Have a good day. Yep. Well, technically, they don't have a boss, though, right? Like, no one's telling them to say that. They're just doing it's it just out of It's just good customer service, though. Yeah. You want yeah. people to be happy around you. You don't want them Absolutely. to have a miserable ride. But also, what their complaints are seem to be that uh, they're making low wages. That seems to be what it's all about, making mm-hmm. low wages. They want a living wage, they say. And I get whatever a living wages. And so I would assume Uber's I would assume Uber is dropping rate in order to compete better in the marketplace. That's the claim so, here. We got some of the numbers on that. So there are three choices. There's uh, the choice of now at this point the drivers are getting 80% of the ticket. Uber's getting 20. Now Seems I don't know what fair. the I don't know I wouldn't know what the fair number what what the fair number is, but uh, I could tell you that there are other ride services out there and those other ride services could steal uh, riders away from Uber by offering 7, you know, 85 15. Yeah, sure. That's certainly a possibility. You need to look into that because that's important. The other thing is is that when it comes to fares is that Cheaper fares get you more rides. You're busier uh, more often, and that's a very good thing. Now, that's not what they're saying if, here. Well, hold on. Well, let's just raise the rate of the ref- fares then. Let's go ahead and double, increase it by fifty percent. Then if you won't want, get as many rides. Then you won't get as many rides. That's really what it comes down to. They're complaining about a minimum wage uh, job here, and I can tell you, at sixteen years old, I could drive a car. Minimum wage is an entry-level job. That's the purpose of it. It is the purpose of a minimum wage job is so that you set a floor at which 14, 15, 16-year-old individuals can get into the marketplace. Surely there are people that choose not to enter the marketplace at that time, but this is the floor Mm -hmm. that we, we, I'm, I'm using quotation marks here, as a society have decided that this is the floor for people who are 14, 15, 16 to get into the marketplace. If you are getting paid minimum wage and you are older than that, there are one of two problems. The minimum wage is too high and it's excluding uh, younger workers and you're stealing the job of a younger worker, essentially, or you don't provide a service that's any better than a 16-year-old, so- right? I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to do to say about that. All right, so we've got Uber George on the line here, and I'm just going to bring him in here for some initial comments. We haven't gotten through the uh, the, the full story uh, from Jacobin Magazine, which is an ostensibly uh, you know socialist rag. 
George, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, your thoughts just on what you've heard so far. I think you probably have been listening for this, and you actually sent this article to you earlier today, knowing that you work for Uber. You are one of their drivers. Yep. And you seemed relatively happy about it when uh, you were on the phone with us in the past. Were you just uh, putting on a front? Is it really just an awful experience overall? Cry on our shoulder, George. Uh, t- tell me more, George. It, Go ahead. It has its ups and downs, really. I mean, like sure, any job. The up, part, the up part is um, I get to make my own hours, so there's that, and I don't have to ask permission to take time off of work and stuff. The down, the down part for me has always been with, uh, um, just driving in downtown D.C., dealing with that kind of traffic in which I can understand why the people who live there ask for Uber or take the metro or, you know, Lyft or whatnot. You yeah, know, and I'd say, by the way, driving in downtown D.C., not a skill that a 16-year-old really can master. Mm. Oh, no, definitely not. But, yeah, um, the whole thing with uh, competition with Lyft, I kind of decided to um, join Lyft as well. So now I'm both Uber and Lyft oh, driving. Oh, interesting. So there's no prohibition on doing both. Nope. That's, that basically, what it is is like if if I get a call on one um, service, for example, then I go offline with the other. So if I get a mm-hmm. call, um, a requ- call request from Lyft, then I go, go offline with Uber and vice versa on that. What's the payout? Is there a difference in payout? Because Mark was just talking about how Uber's 80%. Does Lyft pay different? It's basically the same. However, if you work, if you're online for 50 hours a week or more with Lyft, you keep the whole thing. Really? Yeah. And one and another thing. So if you're dead, if you're dedicated enough as a driver with with Lyft, they will. Is it that you keep it beyond 50 hours or they'll just let you keep it all if they know that you're logging that many hours per week? How does that work? They, you keep it all if you've been logging that many hours per week like that. So Lyft makes like, nothing. How do they uh, how does that well, work? Basically, for them? Because not many people are going to um, put in 50 hours. I per see. Week. Most people who do these ride share things were doing it as a sort of weekend thing as extra a side money job. For job. Yeah, exactly. A okay. side job. Right. Because you know, if you've got a full time job. And that's 40 hours a week, and you know, you've know you got weekends off, and you just, you want to make some extra money. Like you said, you set your own hours, so go out whenever you damn well feel like it and pick up some rides. Yeah, so that's how it does. Also, I think they got like a graduated thing where if it's like just shy of um, 50 hours, like say you work 40 hours or something like that, I think they take like only 10%, something like that, if I recall. And um, also, unlike Uber, Lyft, you, um, I'm told you can work anywhere in the country, and I don't have to you know, sign on again to like um, sp- apply and do all, all the red tape stuff like that um, to a new city like I would with Uber. So if I wanted to drive up to Keene, New Hampshire, theoretically, I haven't tried this yet, and then go online with Lyft, I can accept Lyft rides, you know, while really? I'm up there. Something because like that's, that, always yeah. been, uh, that's always been a frustration for me. I've always thought, oh, I would love to try this out in New Hampshire, but I didn't know that, you know, Uber, I don't think exists uh, in New Hampshire yet at this point. So what you're saying no, is Lyft doesn't – Lyft doesn't restrict you to other operation uh, in cities elsewhere. It, it, yeah, Lyft does not restrict me to one city. According Interesting. To the- now, d- okay, so I've got more questions, and I've got more of this article. George, can you stick with us for a little while as we kind of go through some of the more details that are going to be coming up here? Yeah, sure. All right, great. I appreciate it because uh, I know you're busy. We'll come back with more uh, with uh, formerly TSA George, now Uber George and Uber Lyft George. It's Free Talk Live, and we'll tell you more about what the Socialist article here says about how awful it is to work for Uber. Free Talk Live. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to MyMagicMud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin. MyMagicMud.com. Next to water and food, you need a safe, storable fuel supply for your preparedness needs. Spare fuel is the answer. Spare fuel can be used in any gas-powered vehicle or generator. Spare fuel is perfect for any unforeseen out-of-gas emergencies. Unlike gasoline, spare fuel is safe to store with your other supplies, and it can be stored for many years. Go to GetSpareFuel.com for special pricing. That's GetSpareFuel.com. 
Free Talk Live. Now, I can understand why some people would look at what the uh, the mainstream environmental movement says and does and advocates and come to the conclusions that, well, some of these people seem to want humans to go back into caves. They do. But that's not to say that just because the most vocal uh, environmental activists out there are socialist nut jobs are, are, are that way means that, uh, well, we should just forget about uh, taking care of the environment. Who, Who wants pollution? Wants that? Who, who wants any of that stuff? Right. What and, I want is, is market-based solutions that don't involve threatening violence against people, and that's what the government solution always is. The government doesn't persuade. The government doesn't ask. The government demands. And if you don't go along with their demands, they've got a nice, cold, concrete cage waiting for you. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Many Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. Call 800-917-8251. 800 800-917-8251. 800-917-8251. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. The socialist Jacobin magazine is not happy with Uber. They are claiming that it is awful uh, to be an Uber Uber driver. They're finding some very upset drivers uh, for this interview. And, of course, it's inevitable that as uh, as Uber, Uber George, now Uber Lyft George, because he's now working uh, with both of those companies, has told us, he says, yeah, there's ups and downs. And what job doesn't have ups and downs? I mean, there's I mean, any, almost any time you're doing work for someone else, there's going to be some pro- things you don't like uh, about that. So they found the people who don't like Uber, and they're talking to them, and we're getting their opinions. And we'll also uh, continue with George here in a moment. And uh, he will come along with us as we share more from this story and give us his perspective as someone who works for both Uber and Lyft. You know, um, if you want to help people out of poverty, and I can see that that's what the goal is for these uh, these folks at the Socialist Magazine, Mm -hmm. I get. What they want to do is they want to see people helped out of poverty. They want to see a leveling of the playing field, as it were. Um, I think the first step is to get people out of crushing poverty. Um, the kind of poverty that you're talking where they can make, you know, less than $5 a day, that kind of thing. That's what Free Talk Live's been trying to do with our BuzzBox uh, coffee program. If you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, if you drink coffee, you should go there and get a free pound of delicious, shade-grown, uh, completely organic, top 
grade Arabica bean coffee. Try it. Enjoy it. See how you like it. If you don't like it, cancel the subscription you have there at uh, coffee.freetalklive.com. Nothing will happen after that. But if you enjoy it, continue to get coffee. Customize your uh, your needs, whether you want, uh, you, know, you can get it from specific places. You can get it delivered every two weeks, four weeks, six weeks. You can get specific amounts. Uh, you know, how many pounds do you want delivered? This is really important. Also, if you're a decaf drinker, they have water decaffeinated. So you it's you probably can't get shade grown in your grocery store. You s- certainly can't get water decaffeinated in your grocery store. These are really this is really good coffee that's really good for you and mm. it's good for the world because we're able to give micro loans to people through Kiva. We're helping people all the time and when they pay back the loans, we help more people. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. So the uh, Uber drivers in Los Angeles have formed CATA, the California App-Based Drivers Association. They begin paying dues because, you know, I guess paying dues to a union is going to somehow help them keep more money in their pocket. Well, Not sure. <laughs> every organization wants to uh, needs needs to be funded. Well, not every organization needs a whole lot of funding. You can come together and have a meeting with people and, you know, not have to pay dues yeah, you could. to organize and yeah. protest. They could uh, organize themselves without uh, get, hooking up the Teamsters. The Teamsters are likely yeah. where the dues are going. Mm. Right. So some, you know, fat cat Teamsters are likely making a sweet living off of that. Hey, you know, um, it's if it may be worth – sometimes it's worth – Hiring a professional to get the job done. I don't have a problem with that. The question is, is you need to really know for yourself whether it's the right thing. If you are voluntarily hiring a negotiator from the Teamsters to uh, you know, negotiate with Uber, that's fine by me. If you're forcing other drivers who don't want to do it to do it, as far as I'm concerned, you're advocating for theft. We've got Rideshare George with us uh, on the line. He works for both Uber and Lyft now. And, uh, George, uh, thanks for hanging out with us here. I'm going to go through some more of this story from Jacobin Magazine, and feel free to uh, to jump in with uh, with comments. So the story continues here, and it says that uh, they're act- Uber is active in 130 cities, and if company executives are to be believed, it doubles its revenue every six months. Uber makes that money by relying on a network of thousands of drivers who are not technically employees of the company, but rather independent contractors. The company calls them driver partners, who receive a percentage of its fares. From the very beginning, Uber attracted drivers with a bait-and-switch. Take the company's launch in Los Angeles. In May of 2013, Uber charged customers a fare of $2.75 per mile, with an additional $0.60 per minute under 11 miles per hour. Drivers got to keep 80% of the fare. Working full-time, drivers could make a living wage between $15 and $20 an hour. Drivers rushed to sign up, and thousands leased and bought cars just to work for Uber, especially immigrants and low-income people desperate for a well-paying job in a terrible economy. But over the last year, the company has faced stiff competition from its arch-rival Lyft. To raise demand and push Lyft out of the L.A. market, Uber has cut UberX fares nearly in half to $1.10 per mile, plus 21 cents per minute. So, have you been around through those fare cuts? Has that uh, is that only in L.A. where that's happening? Uh, what's going yeah, on with that? Yeah, that seems to be only in L- L.A. because that we, we don't get it that bad right there. I get I get more than that here in D.C. But then again, I guess the competition from Lyft is not quite as um, big for Uber here in D.C. as it is in L.A. But yeah, that that, that sounds right there. Yeah, I would not want to be an Uber driver in L.A. Mm. G- given that right there, because yeah, I make more here in D.C. than L- than apparently in L.A. does. Right there, twenty twenty miles is gonna get me a lot more than twenty dollars. I tell you that right now. I mean, t- I get like um, I drive like from t- drive people sometimes from Tyson's Corner in Virginia, that's on on the Beltway, into like say the airport just down to downtown D.C. That's always over thirty dollars, and that's like about uh say eleven twelve miles, maybe thirteen tops. Right there, so it, that that's more than what was apparently an LA driver gets. If they're only getting a dollar something a you know a mile. So you would be insulted if uh, if Uber cut rates to that low. That low, yeah. I got. I would only be. I I would have to get like some other job and then just do Uber on the weekends like that. I wouldn't be able to do full time like that, you know. But yeah, that 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 sounds a bit low there. 
Uber drivers say they have no say in the pricing, yet they must carry their own insurance and foot the bill for gas and repairs. A cost of a lot of people tip, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking to some Uber users this weekend, and um, you know the suggestion is they tip. George, who would you? Say, how? What would the percentage of people uh, the tip be? I mean, I get tips, but but they're few and far few and far between. Few but and far between. Tips, okay, thank you. It's yeah. not required, yeah. right? It's, it's not a yeah. It's not required. I tell them it's not required, but a lot of times they insist. Sometimes, yeah, but it's usually like about a few bucks, five five bucks. One guy, I hope you know hooked up, you know helped out. He gave me twenty bucks, so mm. I, I was thrilled about that. Sure. But, yeah. Can you tell me a percentage of people um, the tip? Probably three uh, percent. Yeah, three percent of people tip. Yeah. Yeah, give or take. Yeah. Okay. Because because it's like really like I said, it's one of those not necessary things, you know, not required sort of things. But you know, when they get tips, you know, they, hey, I'm happy for it. <laughs> so if you, according to the IRS, says Jacobin Magazine, you factor in the bill for gasoline and repair costs, the IRS claims that's about fifty six cents per mile is uh, is what that costs on average. With Uber's new pricing model, drivers are forced to work under razor-thin margins. Armand, for instance, made about $20 an hour just a year ago, and now, some days, he doesn't even break minimum wage. His experience is quite common among L.A. Uber drivers the author spoke to. For many, driving for Uber has become a nightmare. Armand often works up to 17 hours a day to bring home what he used to make in an eight-hour shift. When he emailed Uber to complain about his plummeting pay, he said the company blew him off. Uber's attitude is that drivers are free to stop working if they're dissatisfied, but for drivers like Armand, who invested serious money in their cars, quitting isn't an option. See, now, <laughs> what does this hey, mean? I bought, I bought a car to drive for Uber, so I kind of can, can kind of sympathize with the guy right there. You know, I had, a guy, I had a friend of mine that uh, bought a pickup truck and a brand new plow set up to do um, plowing. Mm -hmm. It was the lightest snowfall we had that um, in, in years here in New Hampshire. And it was, uh, you know, like he, he got under the gun, like he wasn't making any money. And, uh, you know, I mean, yeah, it's risky. It's Uber's like not responsible it. For yeah. your investment in the in it, what what kind of rules do they have as far as cars go? Basically, the cars just has to be at least for an Uber X, it has to be a four door car, no older than a 2006 model. That that's probably going to change next year. Hmm. So, and um, like it can't be more than eight years old. Right. And uh, that's it. you know relatively good condition as far as cars go. You know, pass inspection and. Um, emissions and all that okay all right we'll come back with more here about some of these claims i mean i can i can definitely empathize with this it sounds like some of these drivers in la have really been uh screwed by uber's policy changes and they feel like they have no voice we'll come back with more your thoughts are welcome as well and george you're welcome to stick with us uh, for further commentary more on the way here 855 450 free that's 855 450 3733 it's free talk live Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Have you heard? Proactive Plus is faster and better than ever. Stay tuned for a million bottle giveaway and you'll also receive free shipping. Do you have troubled skin? Acne? Well, we have great news. With Proactive Plus, your acne can heal and you can help prevent new breakouts from happening. Don't miss this limited time offer. Give us a call at 800-538-5252 because we're going to let a million people try Proactive Plus risk-free and get two free gifts and also receive free shipping when you call right now. You heard it, this offer won't last long. So call Proactive Plus now and you'll receive a 60-day risk-free trial of Proactive Plus, two free extras and free shipping. Call 800-538-5252. This is our exclusive radio offer, never on TV. 
Get your risk-free 60-day trial of Proactive Plus with free shipping. That's right, free shipping. Don't wait. Call 800-538-5252. That's 800-538-5252. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Dial toll free. Especially if you are working for one of the ride-sharing services like Uber, The story we're sharing with you here is from Jacobin Magazine. Apparently, it's a socialist magazine. Uh, But that doesn't mean that all the things they have to say are useless or uh, uninformative. I think this is an interesting story where they've interviewed multiple drivers for Uber in Los Angeles. Now, we've got a driver who works for Uber and also Lyft in the D.C. area. And he's saying he'd be pretty upset, too, if Uber had done the things to him and the other drivers in D.C. that they've done in L.A., which includes cutting the rate uh, from $2.75 per mile down to $1.10 per mile. So, And it was an, ad- an additional $0.60 cents per minute under 11 miles per hour, as well as uh, – and that has also been cut. That's now $0.21 cents per minute. So it's just been sliced – majorly yeah. uh, across the board. They're going head-to-head with Lyft and intending to knock them out of the L.A. market, Well, is what it sounds like. I don't know if they're going to be successful at that. I'm not, that's not my job to predict that, but this, what the tactic they are using yeah. um, is not new. <laughs> it is not unique. It has been employed by many businesses and many marketplaces. Is once they get their foothold, then they raise their prices back up. Now, the uh, claim here is that drivers you know, feel like they can't leave. They feel like they're stuck, some of them, because they've spent money that they otherwise wouldn't have spent. They came on board. And, th- and this seems like it's obviously not a contract breach, probably because of the way the contract was written. I'm guessing the contract says... Uber can change rates at any damn time we please, and if you do, if you continue driving with us, that indicates you've consented to the new rate. You know, Liking it is optional. How, that's how these corporate contracts tend to go. But that kind of sucks, right? Because if you get into the business thinking, great, I can make $2.75 per mile with this, awesome. That'll make it worthwhile for me to take my own money and invest in a car. Uber doesn't have to invest any money in your car. It's the driver who's doing that, and they're doing they get it. eighty percent. They're doing it on the speculation that things are going to continue on into the future. Now, obviously, Uber could go out of business, uh, you know, next week. So Uber doesn't owe them anything, but at the same time, 
maybe allowing drivers to have some influence over the rate that is charged wouldn't hurt. You know, allow a driver to uh, adjust their rate upwards if if they want to. Why would that be such a bad thing? It's a good. Sorry, Derek. Go ahead. It's a good suggestion, but ride sharing is a new industry, mm-hmm. and so it's not like. Uber or Lyft really knows how the future is going to play out. It sounds like they made some pretty predictable choices in the beginning by paying their drivers a lot. They guaranteed that they had a lot of uh, employees, so to speak, to work with, that they had a huge labor market. And now that they've realized, oh, okay, we've got enough people with cars who are willing to drive people around. Let's see what happens when we cut those rates. Maybe we'll lose some of the drivers. Maybe we'll make a little bit more money. This is totally predictable. And for some of the employees to not see the writing on the wall, maybe they're just not economists. That's that's fine. Most okay. people aren't. But th- this is a new industry and they Sounds like they might have invested a little too much. They expected well, this to be like taxi driving, and it's not. Right. Well, they've, um, you know, the the difficulty here is is that Uber is making a decision, business decision for Uber, and Uber's right. business partners, these drivers, may or may not like that decision. They don't feel like partners, and I can't blame them. At least in L.A., yeah. because they feel like they've been screwed. And if you were a partner, then you would be able to have more of a say in how things are operating. There's really only one way to send the proper message to Uber. That is, leave Uber. Yeah, right. They're they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna leave. Jump I get, over to Lyft. I, I get unionizing. That's fine if you want to send a message first. That's mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend paying union dues. Uh, you know, get together. You know, get together, put a petition um, together amongst drivers or something. Hey, if you don't let us have influence over our rates, we're gonna go over to Lyft. Maybe they maybe Lyft will pay them better. Yeah, or start their own ride sharing company there's no that's no, the other option and that's yeah. the thing that the uh that this article here of course doesn't acknowledge as a possibility right uber and lyft came out of nowhere they came out of nowhere through innovation in the marketplace through you know digital technology that allows gps and uh, cell phones to you know connect people with rides and yeah. there's no reason why that can't be imitated it can't be that hard to find some programmers who can ape uber or lyft it's it's not complicated technology. The programming is out there. It's obviously doable. So, but of course, that takes an entrepreneurial mind, uh, mindset, and most people who are working folks don't really have that mindset. They just want a job. They just want to be able to pick yes. people up and drop them off and uh, and get a paycheck. I'm yeah, not nobody's excusing that. Owed that. It right. just sounds like the, some of the language that these people who the article has interviewed are expecting something from the world. Like I should have a uh, what do they call it? Living a living wage. wage. Mm-hmm. And uh, they don't define what that means, but they just want more money. And they think that they're owed it because they're driving people around. Like, that's, you know, well, some specialized skill or something. Yeah, living wage is code for I want more money. And I yes. get it. I want more money, too. But I happen to be a, you know, like I work for myself. And if I want more money, I need to serve more people. Uh, I mean, that's sort of the difficulty here is is that they don't they're not happy. They don't want to uh, you know work at the wage that they work at, but they feel trapped. So they act unhappy. So they're going to make less money, and mm, yeah. I mean that's that you know they're going to not be on the clock as much. It's really difficult. We've got r- a rideshare George, by the way, is uh, is back with us here. He's hanging on, yep. kind of listening in on this conversation. Let me jump back into some more of the story here. They're yeah. talking about the organizing uh, that uh, Dan McKibben, the Teamsters West Coast organizer, told the author of this story at Jacobin Magazine. "Quote: These drivers are very vulnerable if they don't band together, and right now they have no one to protect them." The company, uh, unquote, the company wouldn't speak to me about CATA, the Teamsters, or how it deals with driver grievances, but it seems to brush off everyone else, too. Earlier this summer, when CATA leader DeWolf met with William Barnes, Uber's L.A. director, Barnes allegedly laughed in his face. As DeWolf recounted, when he told Barnes that drivers planned to organize with the Teamsters, Barnes responded, quote, Uber would never negotiate with any group that claims to represent drivers, unquote. Uber repeatedly ignored my request for comment on this exchange. Instead, the company issued a statement accusing the Teamsters of trying to line their coffers with new Uber driving members. And that's probably an accurate statement as well. well they're, they're offering a service, yeah. and they're expecting to get paid for that service. I don't think there's anything wrong with that either. Uber claims there's This no- is going to work out the way it works out. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, our commentary on it is uh, superfluous to the situation. I, As long as... As long as this is voluntary, and by that I mean uh, that nobody employs the force of law to get what they want, sure, that they don't use the law against people who haven't done anything, I don't have an issue with this. And I really don't. But these are market forces at work. George, can- go ahead. 
Yeah, basically, honestly, I think what's going to happen in LA if they keep if Uber keeps it up like that is a lot of the drivers are just going to have to make this a part time. They're Ubering a part time gig while they seek other employment, like say at mm-hmm. another job, and which then there'll be less drivers on the road, and eventually it'll be an equilibrium as this. Um, basically a race to the bottom but, as far as you know, rates go there. And and it's certainly fair for not only for the drivers to organize, but also for them to speak out. And and this is part of that, right? Letting people know everything is not as it seems with Uber. Not everybody is totally happy with how things are going. And if they can spread the word that Uber is not treating them well, at least in L.A., you say your things are good in D.C., but at least yeah, the D.C., L.A. You get what- you get what you put into it. Like, for example, a few Saturdays ago, uh, after working at a 13 hour shift, I made $324. And that's after, after Uber got its cut. Wow. That's pretty one, good. One yep. Saturday night. Yeah. That's like stripper money right there. Nice. <laughs> um, I I have to say that I think that um, you know when when a lot of these people are going to have a difficult time getting a job. Okay, so like the unemployment market isn't exactly stellar and it's not looking very good. One of the things that's a problem with the minimum wage as a concept is is that it it has an expectation of only having market expansion. Now by that, what I mean is that uh, when you uh, when you set a minimum wage, you're setting it now. At the way things are right now, the wage should be this for 14, 15, 16-year-olds who are in, entering the job market. They shouldn't make less than this because that would be exploitive or whatever the, the term is that you come up with your mind when you um, you know set a minimum wage. But the problem is, is that economies have booms and busts. They expand and they contract. And the cost of labor is one of those things that's going to need to be... You have to have the ability to compete in a downward fashion against the other people out there. So um, currently, you have drivers that are making something like minimum wage in Los Angeles who are 30 years old, and they feel they have a higher skill set. Mm-hmm. I get it. Maybe that's the maybe that's the case. But how do 16-year-olds compete in a marketplace where drivers are getting minimum, where 30-year-olds are getting minimum wage. I bet you there's a minimum age to drive for Uber. There probably is, yeah. but that's just you're just talking about one marketplace. Mm-hmm. The fact is is that if uh, Uber drivers are getting minimum wage and they decide, you know what, I don't need to put miles on my car and get minimum wage, I might as well get minimum wage in a McDonald's uniform. Yeah. Now you are di- they are directly competing against people entering into the marketplace. And this is what I'm talking about. If you are, as an employer have the option of hiring a 30-year-old who all things being equal, um, not a 16-year-old, you're likely to hire the 30-year-old. All right, we'll come back with more because there is more to the story here over at Jacobin Magazine about Uber behind the scenes in Los Angeles. Things are uh, not looking so good in a lot of ways. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Beautiful Bellwood flooring just got even better with twice the scratch resistance and four times the abrasion resistance of other brands. And right now, Lumber Liquidators has exclusive deals on Bellwood with savings up to 40%. Choose from over 140 varieties, including Brazilian cherry, American walnut, even Bellwood's hot new matte finish that gives you that oil finished look without all the maintenance, all with a transferable 100-year warranty. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest to you. First ever 36-month financing is available, but hurry, these amazing deals end Tuesday. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Monday, October 6, 2014. Gold has been trading around $1,200. Silver around $16.91, and Bitcoin at $300. We'll have more on Bitcoin's current price coming up. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Support for Liberty Beat comes from SovereignMiners.com. Interested in mining Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies? Well, Sovereign Miners has you covered. All purchases come with a free script ISIC miner. Visit SovereignMiners.com to buy your miner today. In the news, the price of Bitcoin dropped nearly 20% over the weekend as it reached its lowest trading point this calendar year. Enthusiasts speculate the price decline may be in response to large businesses who accept Bitcoin, then immediately convert it to cash. Others speculate the drop may be a result of a hesitant market waiting to see what sort of regulations will come out of government institutions. While the drop may seem sudden, the price has still doubled the trading price this time last year. An American photojournalist who contracted Ebola while working in West Africa began his journey home for treatment on Sunday, while a man who recently arrived in Dallas from Liberia remained in critical condition with the disease. 33-year-old Ashoka Mukpo will be the second Ebola patient to be treated at the Nebraska Medical Center's Specialized Isolation Unit. Months before the attacks of September 11, 2001, three witnesses described seeing the alleged al-Qaeda hijackers at Logan Airport in Boston. The New York Post reported on new details released into the public archive following the settlement of a wrongful death suit. The witnesses, which include an American Airlines official, reported videotaping of security checkpoints and odd behavior from men later identified as Mohammed Atta and other hijackers. Despite the witnesses reporting what they saw, no steps were taken to question the men. Support for Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud. 100% natural teeth whitener, polishes teeth and detoxifies the mouth. Visit MyMagicMud.com to buy your jar of My Magic Mud today. Did you know you can support the Liberty Beat when shopping on Amazon.com? Simply log into your account after clicking our Amazon affiliate link at LibertyBeat.com, Amazon. You can help the Liberty Beat continue to deliver hard-hitting Liberty news and activist updates by doing your Amazon shopping after following our link at TheLibertyBeat.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 6, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. A controversial resolution unanimously passed by the United Nations Security Council has sparked fears of loss of civil liberties in the name of fighting terror. UN Security Council Resolution 2178 was sold as a solution for dealing with citizens of member states joining the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. The resolution requires, by international law, for the nation states to stop accused foreign terrorist fighters from crossing into their borders, stop and ban funding of such fighters, prosecute, rehabilitate, and reintegrate returning foreign fighters, and stop recruiting and equipping of anyone traveling abroad to engage in terrorist activity or training. Russia Today reports that Human Rights Watch fears the bill could lead to unrestricted civil liberties violations in an attempt to enforce a vague international resolution. Aboriginal communities plan to protest the G20 meeting in Brisbane, Australia on November 15th and 16th. The protest is an effort to raise awareness about genocides and theft of indigenous land in the 20 participating nations. Callum Clayton Dixon of Intercontinental Cry stated that he does not recognize Australian citizenship or the flag as a symbol of pride, but rather one of oppression. The 5th Annual Liberty Fest in New York City will take place this weekend. Confirmed speakers include Adam Kokesh, Dr. Tom Woods, Jeffrey Tucker, 
and the Liberty Beat Zone, Eric Bros. To buy tickets and learn more, visit LFNYC.com. Tony Stiles, a New York City radio host, has launched his show on the Genesis Communications Network. He's calling on fans this week to reach out to local radio stations and request they air the Tony Stiles show locally. Visit TonyStiles.com for more information. Support for Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live each Friday night at 9 o'clock Central, 10 o'clock Eastern at CoreyMooreShow.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Monday, October 6, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. For years, Southwest Airlines has boasted having the most loyal customers in the industry. Now the low-cost carrier is calling on its most frequent customers to finally do something in return for the airline. The company rolled out their new Loyalty Goes Both Ways program in a new ad campaign. You said you wanted free check bags and we listened. Now you listen to us. Southwest's program is part of a new trend of companies not letting their customers exploit them anymore. CEO Gary C. Kelly has gone as far as to record this radio ad, which Southwest started airing nationwide. Hi, this is Southwest CEO Gary Kelly. If my wife calls asking about me, I need you to lie and say I was with you. Remember all those low fares I gave you. To any Southwest customers thinking about saying they're too busy to help, Kelly has some harsh words saying, quote, we're always there for our customers. To anyone who can't do us a solid now and then, f*** you, that's not loyalty, that's freeloading. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Are you a, a driver for Uber or Lyft? There's a story at Jacobin Magazine, which is apparently a socialist magazine, where they're interviewing some drivers for Uber in the L.A. area, and these drivers are saying they're pretty upset. Uh, they've been, they feel like they've been screwed because when they started with Uber, the rates were $2.75 per mile. Plus, there was like a 60 cent uh, per mile under 11 miles per hour. Now, they've cut that uh, within the last year. They've cut that to $1.10 per mile. Not because they hate drivers, most likely, but because they had to compete. Yep. Um, but unfortunately, that's making life very difficult for some of these drivers. Some of them are saying they will work all day and not even break minimum wage as far as what they're what they're making per hour. Uh, one driver says he works up to 17 hours a day to bring home what he used to make in an eight-hour shift, and that's a that's a huge difficulty to uh, to be bringing on board, especially after you've invested your own money in the tools that you need. In this case, a car uh, to actually perform this particular service. Maybe you spent thousands of dollars the year prior on this car, expecting that you'd be able to continue to make this this money, and then it does, you know the company just changes the rates on you. That's I can see why people are upset about that. It's they're not obligated. Uber's not obligated to keep the rates the same, but at the same time, if they burn the bridges with their drivers, it's not going to be good for Uber because the drivers are already organizing, they're protesting, and the word's going to get out about about how Uber is uh, is handling the situation. Well, I hate to sound unsympathetic, but these people but I will took do a that risk right now. Here we go. <laughs> these people are Entering a new industry, they are taking a risk, and this is part of the price discovery, where they're saying, how much should we charge for this service? They had one good gear where they made you know, lots of money. Maybe they were overvalued at that time, and now the price is adjusting. Maybe they'll be undervalued now, and <laughs> the price will adjust again. Who knows? This is a risky ad adventure, and right. these and, people and got into it. When you talk that. about price discovery, this is something that's going on constantly, and it's one of the things that unions don't seem to understand. Um, I'm not trying to... I don't want to put a pigeonhole everybody, but there's, I'm just talking about sort of generalities. Unions seem to do something which is pit employees or business partners in mm -hmm. this case, uh, against the employer. And this is a relationship. Relationships work best when people are happy. You shouldn't work where you're not happy. I understand you don't always have those options. You'll still be best off if you pretend to be happy. And yes, 
people can take advantage of you while you're pretending to be happy. I, I get all of those things, but if, for instance, this hostess situation, remember when uh, Twinkies were going away and everybody was all upset mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and they were bl- essentially blaming the union? I think that there's a very good argument that unions mm, made it so that, you know, American car manufacturers weren't as competitive uh, against sure. um, foreign car man- manufacturers. And it took them quite some time to recover, and they may not have recovered yet. And, uh, the, you know, they, 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 they don't allow for fluctuation. When you push the envelope about how, on how much employees make, then when the market contracts, how do you pay the employees? We've also got George with us here. He is a driver for both Uber and Lyft, and he's in the D.C. area, not in L.A. He says he'd be upset if they cut the rates like that in D.C. as well. And, uh, George, thanks for hanging with us here and continuing as we roll through this story here from Jacobin Magazine. So Uber apparently is not talking. They ignored the reporter's request, the the article uh, author's request for comment on the exchange And they issued a statement accusing the Teamsters of trying to line their coffers with new Uber driving members. Uber claims there's no need for a union. It instead asks drivers to trust the company is acting in their best interest. Uber refused to show me complete data detailing average hourly compensation for drivers. It does claim, however, that Uber X drivers are making more money now than before the summer's price cuts. Quote, the average fares per hour for a Los Angeles Uber X driver partner in the last four weeks were 21.4% higher than the December 2013 weekly average, they claim, one of their spokespeople. She said, and drivers on average have seen fares per hour increase 28% from where they were in May of this year, unquote. However, the author says, I couldn't find a single driver who is making more money with the lower rates. What's clear is that for Uber drivers to get by, they're going to have to take on more rides per shift. And Uber implicitly concedes as much, saying, quote, with price cuts, trips per hour for partner drivers have increased with higher demand. So while drivers make less per fare, Uber suggests they recoup losses by just driving more miles. That may make sense for an Uber analyst crunching the numbers in Silicon Valley. But for drivers, more miles means hustling to cram as many runs into a shift as possible to make the small margins worthwhile. One of their drivers named Dan told uh, the author after pulling an all-nighter, bringing drunk people home from bars, quote, These days I won't even stop to take an S. I just drive, sometimes for up to 15 hours per day. It's humiliating, unquote. Lower rates also means they pay more out of their own pockets for gas, and their cars depreciate in value faster because they're driving more miles. Meanwhile, Uber acts as if it's doing drivers a favor by offering them work in the first place. Uber CEO Travis Kalanick, who loves uh, giving inspirational talks about innovation, often claims that Uber helps people become small business owners. But working long shifts and forking over 20% of fares to a group of Silicon Valley app engineers doesn't really count as owning a small business. And, you know, I can can agree to some extent with the cynical uh, view here Calling them a driver partner is somewhat dishonest. I mean, they're not their partner. They're just drivers. They're independent contractors. And yes, they can leave anytime they want. There's no doubt about that. So can any employee. And are they business owners? I don't know. Do you own your own business if you're an employee going and working for an employer? I don't know if that's your business. You know, it's really about attitude. If you're a waiter or a waitress working at a restaurant, do you own your own business? To some extent, you do. You're you're deciding how your thing, how your business is going to be done. Um, what distinguishes them between an employee and a driver partner is that they choose their own hours. This mm-hmm. is extraordinarily important. Okay. This is the distinction. An employee comes in at 8 a.m. and leaves at 4 p.m. because the boss said that's what you do. A driver partner, in this case, clocks on with an app. Gets to um, works as long as they want. You know, you decide you want to take a, a stroll in the park. You can take some time off to do that. You want to spend some time with a loved one. Fine, you can do that. You want to have an extra long lunch where you eat some an ice cream sundae. It's cool. That's a you good can point. Do it. There's real value there. What's it worth? What's it worth to be able to set yeah. your own hours? Go ahead, George. Yeah, those are those are the reasons why I stay with Uber and doing left like there. That's the main reason why I do my line of work, <laughs> just because of what you just mentioned there. You know, after eleven years and four months, eight days working for the TSA, you know, <laughs> where I used to have a you know one hour lunch when I first started for the first several years, and then went down to forty five minutes, and then now thirty minutes. It's like. Oh God! Now I can pick you know whatever lunch time I want. Mm-hmm. 
that's the reason I stay. But yeah, I'd but would you also. stay? Would the would the ability to set your own hours be worth it if you were making five bucks an hour, six bucks an hour? Not, not quite. No. Right. I just think so. Yeah, I feel for my LA friends, uh, LA brethren, right there. Also, they don't think of the fact that gas is just far more expensive out there in LA. Good point. Than it is here in DC, you know, I mean, I can get gas. It's for something gas, a gallon out there. Three bucks a gallon. Right. Yeah. And that adds so, up. So between between I'm getting paid more and gas is cheaper, where LA they're getting paid less and gas is more. I can understand, you know, their predicament. And you know, all I can suggest to them is. Um, you know, I guess either start driving for a lift as well, like as I have done, mm-hmm. you know, that way you could get more rides or get a, get like a main job. And then like a even if it's just for, working for McDonald's or something and then drive for Uber and Lyft on, on your weekends, on your days off, you know, to, 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 you know, make the difference. George, what's your reaction to this driver Dan's comment that it's humiliating to work up to 15 hours a day? I don't know about humiliating, but it does feel griping like that if you're working that much and you and um you see like for example someone you know flipping burgers at McDonald's making the same amount of money putting for less hours like that you know I can see where he's coming from in that in which case you know hey go work for McDonald's and then just do the Uber on your week. George, thanks for the call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The article in Jacobin Magazine has a little bit more to say, and it gets kind of more ultra-socialist here at the very end. So we'll share that (laughs) with you coming up uh, in moments here on Free Talk Live, and you can share your thoughts as well. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by... By getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference. One cup at a time. Get a free pound. Try out the subscription. Cancel at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years, hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from shinybadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at shinybadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. That's uh, the number brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. We just got back from a great Bitcoin conference at Walt Disney World. Bitcoins are hot on a lot of people's minds, and uh, you can actually make some Bitcoin for doing some investigative work uh, over at Bitcoin Bounty Hunter. Yeah, BitcoinBountyHunter.com. There are bounties available right now. Uh, one's worth... It's 38 bitcoins. Uh, you can do the the math on it, but it looks like it's about $12,000. It tends to vacillate with the uh, the cost of bitcoin. But you can use your investigative skills to collect these bounties. You can believe the government uh, authorities are not going to be solving these cases. In many cases, these cases, um, you know, like they've given up. They've moved on. The only They're only going to be solved by people like you using their skills and talents in figuring out who did what and the information's there just go to bitcoinbountyhunter.com if you just like the if you want to put up a bounty you can contact them if you want to add to the bounties you can do that too it's bitcoinbountyhunter.com this is a fascinating idea and it's really sort of crowdfunding police work and that's interesting BitcoinBountyHunter.com. So I like Derek J's solution the best on this one, and that is these jaded drivers really need to come together, and instead of paying a, a union to try to negotiate with Uber, which Uber's saying they're not going to negotiate on this, so I don't know how that's going to go for them. So instead of paying their money to this union, they should pool their money together or you know do a Kickstarter or something like that. We, the jaded drivers formerly of Uber would like to create Indie <laughs> Driver, some sort of app that does the exact same thing as, as Uber and Lyft, except without the top level uh, bureaucracy or whatever. Because there's no doubt, I mean, that when you're dealing with a centralized company, a corporation like Uber, uh, there's going to be inefficiencies with the centralized model. Now, we were talking at the Bitcoin conference about the idea of using the blockchain technology to hook people up, you know, the, sort of the technology behind Bitcoin to uh, decentralize even further than Uber and Lyft. Because Uber and Lyft, they are providing the valuable services connecting a driver with a passenger. But those aren't really necessary anymore. They the, Even these companies are outdated technically with the, the blockchain technology. There was someone who explained to us during the Austin Bitcoin conference about how it was that the Bitcoin blockchain could be used to do this very same thing, to you know allow someone who wants, with, with the right app, to allow someone who wants a ride to signal that they want a ride, and then allow somebody who's willing to give that ride to be able to access that person. It might even be better because then it could be encrypted and you could have a little more privacy. Sure. Like, hey, I want to be picked up and I don't want anyone to know about it. And you're cutting out the middleman. In that case, you'd be cutting out Uber and Lyft. So, you know, create some sort of indie driver app where all these drivers who are upset and they want to keep all 100% of their earnings, you know, they could get they could get into this and then uh you know, and and then they would be able to do that and then they'd be able to set their own rates because I think that would be the most useful thing. And I think if Uber wants to change their policy to be more friendly to drivers, I think that's what they should do. But ultimately if they don't, then 
maybe a third competitor will come up or maybe Lyft will decide, you know what, we think that our drivers should be able to make a, a, a change in their rates. If they feel like they are worth more, then they should be able to set that up, which would really make them competing with one another because the article here claims that the Uber drivers are competing with one another, but that's not really true if they're not able to set their own rates, right? So if every Uber driver has the exact same rate, that's not really competition. It's only there's more than one car in an area, so you could choose which car for I don't know what reason you would choose it because you wouldn't know if there was a difference between them. Well, right? don't they get ratings? Uh, sometimes there is that. you would want to choose true. someone who has a nicer car or a better rating. Maybe okay. a fr- they wear a friendlier smile. Good point. So, yeah, so the rating could make a difference in whether or not they get chosen. But rate would also make a big difference in whether or not somebody gets chosen. And that would be a way for a, 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 a new driver to the scene, lower their price below the other Uber or Lyft drivers or whatever, if they could do that. And they can't, which is why there really needs to be, I think, a third app. There needs to be something that gives drivers more control over the over the experience. That's what I think. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. But here's the rest of the Socialist Jacobin Magazine article about Uber. Uh, One of the angry drivers says, they think we're a bunch of losers who can't find better jobs. That's why they treat us like robots, like we are replaceable, unquote. Uber, of course, disputes this characterization, saying, quote, Uber succeeds when our partner drivers succeed, unquote. But that's just empty spin, says the author here. His name is Avi Asher Shapiro. Uh, Drivers aren't partners, they're laborers exploited by the company. They have no say in business decisions and can be fired at any time. Instead of paying its employees a wage, Uber just pockets a portion of their earnings. Drivers take all, which is the way it should be, uh, rather than just giving them some flat 8 bucks an hour or 10 bucks an hour, they make what they can make based on their performance. And making money based on performance is, in my opinion, a better way to, to pay someone. And they wouldn't make any of the money if Uber or Lyft weren't connecting the drivers and uh, people who want the services. Exactly. Right. And if you, uh, you know, if you just pay somebody a an hourly wage, then what you're incentivizing them to do is to work, to, is to be around uh, hours. You're not incentivizing them to be a better employee. Right, because then they get paid if they're sitting at the airport waiting for a fare, and they're getting paid when they take the fare. Uber has lots of concerns, and then they're not having people who, you know, are clocked in for, uh, you know, certain hours a day. They're not interested in that. What they're interested in is how quickly people can come, how well they treat the customer, how clean their car is, uh, you know, the, the, the overall quality of the ride. The, uh, an hourly wage does not address that Mm. this line stood out to me they treat us like robots yeah like we're replaceable (laughs) does this guy know that self-driving cars are like right around the corner good point drivers take all the risks says the article and front all the costs the car the gas the insurance yes the executives and the investors who get rich uber is part of a new wave of corporations that make up what's called the sharing economy The premise is seductive in its simplicity. People have skills, and customers want services. Silicon Valley plays matchmaker, churning out apps that pair workers with work. Now anyone can rent out an apartment with Airbnb, become a cabbie through Uber, or clean houses using HomeJoy. Hadn't heard of that one yet. Uh, But under the guise of innovation and progress, companies are stripping away worker protections, pushing down wages, and flouting government regulations. We'd rather have no opportunities at all. Well, they want the old way. They want to bring back the the taxi companies, I guess. But wouldn't this guy be upset at the taxi companies, too? I mean, are the taxi companies known for treating their workers really well? Isn't this an improvement from what was? And I would like to know, because I know there have been taxi cab drivers who have bailed on the taxi cab industry and have started working for, for Uber or Lyft. You can tell your story if you've got one, 855-450-FREE. Final two sentences. He says, at its core, the sharing economy is a scheme to shift risk from companies to workers, discourage labor organizing, and ensure that capitalists can reap huge profits with low fixed costs. There's nothing innovative or new about this business model. Uber is just capitalism in its most naked form. Yeah, well, I mean, that uh, that sort of shows the whole socialist uh, thing, um, you know, really right out there. And I, I think that the best rebuttal from for socialism is always going to be that Margaret Thatcher quote. The problem with socialism is sooner or later you run out of other people's money. And, uh, I mean, you know, it's that's what it comes down to. You, <laughs> capitalism is a good fo- good way to figure out uh, allocation of resources. Now, I don't like particularly like the term capitalism. I like a free market. 
We'll come back with more. Your thoughts are welcome. 855 450 free. I want to talk about the shifting risk claim, though. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. Summertime is safe big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know summer is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex, plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes, all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting. And we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Yesterday, two groups of men shot at each other near Tobagram Base, where I am. Today, the soldiers are happy about some of the men dying and sad about other men dying. Sergeant First Class Aaron Tomlin is only sad about four of the dead people. It's, it's a long, tough day here. Uh, we lost four good men. No. 27 men died. Four American soldiers and 23 Taliban soldiers. You said that four soldiers die and it makes you sad. But you said when Taliban soldiers die, it does not make you sad. I asked Base Commander David Hawkins to make it make sense. The last thing we resort to is hurting anyone. But you have to understand, it's our job to keep the American people safe from our enemies. And sometimes that includes... So if you kill your enemies at your job, it is not sad. Well... It... What if I killed my enemy Ryan at my job? It would not be sad? No, no, you shouldn't do that. But he is rude to me. He steals my yogurts. He makes fun of the way I talk. Look. Only soldiers can kill without getting in trouble. Okay. Are you going to kill Ryan? No. It does not make sense. This is the Onion News Network. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Some people are mad, mad, mad about Uber and some of the, uh, the policies that have changed from uh, over time. In the L.A. market specifically, we had 
uh, Lyft and Lyft slash Uber driver uh, George on with us earlier, and he says that hasn't happened to them in D.C. And if it did happen, he'd be pretty upset about it because he makes decent money doing what he does in D.C. And if they cut the rate like they did in L.A., it wouldn't be worth it to him to continue. Now, maybe it would be worth it to some people, but it's honestly, it sounds like it is pretty difficult to make ends meet out there in L.A. as an Uber driver. Nonetheless, uh, the socialist Jacobin magazine has uh, you know, a few comments to make from a very socialist perspective. We'll uh, share more of that with you here in a moment because they claim that there's uh, shifting risk from companies to workers with this Uber and Lyft and Airbnb and things like that. And I want to talk more about what that means exactly But first, I want you to know about ExpressCoin. You've been thinking about getting Bitcoin, and right around now might be a good time. In fact, it even dipped down lower than $300 per Bitcoin yesterday, as a matter of fact. It's up above $300 today, but yeah, you never know what's going to happen with Bitcoin. Go ahead and uh, hook yourself up with some, and you can do it for no transfer fee by using code FTL at ExpressCoin.com. Not only can you get Bitcoin, you can also get Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin, and Dogecoin. Plus, it's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. They're a licensed money service business, so they've jumped through the government hoops. Uh, And you can get your cryptocurrencies with a money order, check, wire transfer, or by making a cash deposit at a local credit union with shared banking. Just get started. It's easy to start your account over at ExpressCoin.com, and you can be in the United States or Canada. That's ExpressCoin.com. They've got a smartphone app. And don't forget to use coupon code FTL, and you'll get up to $40 worth of your favorite cryptocurrency with no fee whatsoever. ExpressCoin.com. Coupon code is FTL. So, in the very end of this piece over at Jacobin Magazine, author Avi Asher Shapiro says, he's got one of those hyphenated last names, uh, he says that uh, th- that it's at its core, this sharing economy, this new idea of companies hooking up customers with people willing to provide them with services, whether it's a ride or it's an apart, you know, a, a bed to crash in, or it's uh, apparently you can now clean houses, home joy, not heard of that one. Uh, but uh, so there's a variety of these things out there. He says at its core, the sharing economy is a scheme to shift risk from companies to workers discourage labor organizing, and ensure that capitalists can reap huge profits with low fixed cost. Shifting risk from companies to workers. Now, at its, you know, at first blush, it sounds like that, that claim is valid, right? It sounds like that makes sense, that Uber doesn't take the same level of risk that a cab company does. The cab company has to maintain a fleet. The cab company has a much larger overhead cost. He's not worried about the cab companies. He's worried about the drivers. He's saying that the Uber is shifting the, the, the risk from Uber to the drivers. Well, what he's not talking about is— Uber, Not from um, Uber—not shifting the risk from Uber to cab companies. Mm, that's a misinterpretation no, that's of what, what he's saying. saying. I'm, no, no, no. You didn't understand what I was saying, so let me clarify. What I'm saying is the old model, uh, the cab companies, there's a lot more risk for the companies. They have, No, there's not. A company is an is a um, is an arrangement between people to do stuff. If a cab company fails, the employees are out on the street. The same right. thing. Right. I'm is talking the case. about from the company's perspective. There's more risk because they have more assets. They have these depreciating assets, which are the cars, the inventory. They've got employee relations that they have to deal with, and you know, there's a lot more risk involved in that. I, that that I think is absolutely true. Uber doesn't have that same level of risk from the company's perspective. I'm not talking about the drivers Let's here. call it exposure. Let's call it okay. personal responsibility. I think that's what's missing from this article. The, the risk that they're taking on is personal responsibility. That's what the drivers are taking on. Yes. yes. And, and so, yes, they are embracing being their own boss. And when you are your own boss, and you are in this case, it, they can't tell you to go out and work. You get to set your own hours. When um, I worked so- at a cab company... I had to be there when they told me to be there. So when you are your own boss and you're an independent contractor instead of an employee, which is what they're bitching about here. They're saying that, oh, they should be employees. They should get a wage. They should, you know, there should be regulations. It should be like the cab companies is what they're saying. When you take on that extra risk, 
you are taking on that responsibility and you should be able to be rewarded concomitant to that extra responsibility and risk. And you can be, it sounds like, at least in D.C. You know, Uber George just said uh, he made $300 in one night, which is an incredible amount of money for a night's worth of work. Yep, life is all about choices. Those drivers in L.A. could just as easily go where George is. So that's certainly true as well. And they've got themselves a car now. So leave L.A., right? Make You're not that stuck choice. There. Yes. That's another great point. That hasn't been made at all in this uh, in this conversation. So choose a better market. Find out where the best find out where the best Uber price is. You know, there's got to be some sort of forum for Uber drivers, right, out there on the internet. Hey, where will I get paid the most to be an Uber driver? And then go there. That's what it sounds like to me. A lot of these drivers who are complaining in this article it sounds like they have an aversion to personal responsibility. Yes. They have every opportunity in the world. World, and they're just not pursuing them because they'd rather complain and be handed something. So it's true that the risk has been shifted to the drivers. The driver has to take care of their own car. The driver has to handle their own insurance, and, uh, insurance, and that is more responsibility. And I think you're absolutely right with that, uh, Derek J. Take the responsibility, embrace it, and get your butt out of L.A. There's all kinds of reasons to leave L.A. anyway. What a terrible place to live. I'm reading Machiavelli's The Prince, um, Il, Il Principio, or something like that. And you know who Machiavelli is, right? Like this is this is this. He's a uh, bad man, right? That's all I know. Uh, he uh, let's let's call him practical. He's okay. the guy who argued that the ends justifies the means, right? That if you do something good, uh, it doesn't matter how you accomplish that goal. Um, he was more about power and how to achieve it, and that power is in of itself a worthy goal. Uh -huh. So therefore, it doesn't matter how you get it. Uh -huh. And consider He's that power to do anything to uh, to acquire. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and fear. It's better to be feared than loved. That's where the believe, term right? Machiavellian has come from. Right. I yeah. don't know about feared and loved, but um, that's not. I haven't seen that written in there. But one thing that Machiavelli is very clear on, and remember, this is practical advice to rulers in the 17th century. Um, you never give your power to someone else if you do they're going to benefit and you aren't and this is what these drivers are doing they're turning their power over to the teamsters mm -hmm. and the teamsters are going to benefit and the drivers generally aren't yeah that's I, what i see happening yeah. so there you go toll free number tonight i like derek j's solution move out of la go to a better marketplace or start another company Create a, a more driver-oriented company. Create a, create a company owned by the drivers, you know, instead of Uber, which is an innovator. They did a good thing, but maybe their days are numbered now. Maybe they're making business decisions that is going to drive them into the ground because drivers are going to uh, they're going to bail. I expect to see this in the new Internet economy. I expect to see companies that are, you know, more flash in the pans, as it were, because you're going to see the cycle of companies. Mm -hmm. There's, take a look at companies. Which companies have been around for 300 years? OK, let's exclude beer man. Manufacturers, um, <laughs> we, you know, let, who's been there? Who's been there for 200 years? Nobody. Who's been there for 100 years? Not very many. We're, we're seeing as Moore's law of technology, I think, is going to apply to uh, to businesses, and you're going to see their cycles of these businesses mm. speed up. They're going to get very popular. They're going to create something. They're going to they're, they're going to have had their time because somebody else is going to create something that's newer and better, right. faster. And this is what regulation does: is it slows down this cycle. And what we we lack, the, we'll we didn't lose the innovation. I want the innovation as far as these companies go. Uber is a wonderful thing for people to be able to not have to pay high prices to travel from one place to another. Yeah, while we're talking about a market, let's consider who's on the other end of this market. While the drivers are complaining that they're making less in wages, the customer might be celebrating that they're they're paying the much less. Lower. Yes, the, the price is lower. So they get more rides. Right. When these drivers use other sharing services, and you listed some there, including a house cleaning service and a variety of others, mm -hmm. when they use sharing services, they save money. And that's the marketplace being efficient. All right. We'll come back with your calls and thoughts. If you want to make them, you can bring up anything you want here at 855-450 free. Derek jay has got a brand new website he's come across about the Pledge of Allegiance, encouraging people to stop saying the pledge. We'll get into that. And also, Mark apparently will be telling us a story about the federal government studying why fat teenage girls aren't getting dates. It's Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. 
You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Hey, guys, if you're into fantasy football, you've got to check out FanDuel.com. At FanDuel, you play in one-week fantasy football leagues for real money with immediate cash payouts. You only play when you want, and you can change your team any week. FanDuel is paying out over $10 million every week this season. And right now, FanDuel is giving you up to $200 free. That's right. For every dollar you deposit, FanDuel will match it up to $200. Just go to FanDuel.com, click the microphone in the upper right corner, and enter code FOOTBALL70. F-A-N-D-U-E-L.com. Code FOOTBALL70. the number Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though, it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll free to bring up whatever you want. The number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features. That are waiting for you there. Don't say the pledge.com. Derek J has found a new website. I actually have yet to uh, to pull it up, but it sounds pretty intriguing. Tell me more, Derek J. How did you find this new site? I found it at freetalklive.com. It oh, was excellent. one of the uh, news stories that was submitted there by one of the listeners. I missed that one. And uh, I think it's an interesting one. It's not exactly what I expected when I clicked on it. Hmm. It said, don't say the pledge.com. There's three videos and a pretty nice looking website. It says, join the boycott. 
don't say the pledge. So uh, I scrolled down. They it's said, the well, atheists. Yeah. Well, or the humanists. Mm-hmm. And so they say, uh, well, you know, what is this about? It says, well, under God compromises the patriotic message oh. of the pledge. <laughs> Womp! I was so disappointed to yeah. uh, to read that, but let's let's see what they've got to say. All right, under God wasn't part of the original Pledge of Allegiance. Those two words were added to the pledge in 1954. It's That's true. accurate during yeah. the Red Scare. Yep, it says when the country was in the grip of McCarthyism and the communist witch hunt hysteria. Before 1954, the pledge affirmed that we are one nation indivisible with with liberty and justice for all. Indivisible means we can rise above our differences, religious or otherwise. I'm not sure that's what it means, but maybe that's what it means. This is precisely what I expect from the atheists. (laughs) I mean, I really. uh, Okay, so if you want to use patriotism to get what you want, congratulations. That's what patriotism exactly is for. Patriotism is the. It's the veil behind which evil people hide. Um, I mean, I'm sorry to tell you that. The reason that you don't have politicians going, hey, everybody, what we say is always right and always good and always just is because no one would ever believe that crap. Mm -hmm. Politicians are, the term is synonymous with liar, with cheat. Mm -hmm. But when you use patriotism or nationalism, you give cover for these people. That's what that's what it is. Yeah. Patriotism is the excuse. It's the veil behind which they operate. And uh, it's it it's not that I don't think that it's okay to like organizations or something like that. It's just when your uh your your uh, liking of that organization clouds your judgment about that organization and that's exactly what patriotism does patriotism is all about clouding your judgment about the country in which we're talking about Mm -hmm. well the suggestion here is that students stand up for america by sitting down during the Pledge of Allegiance boycott <laughs> until the inclusive version is restored. Oh, man. Boy, wouldn't that be a victory? We could have two words removed from the Pledge of Allegiance and everything would be we'll different. Be, everything's going to be great. <laughs> oh, man. And then, yeah. then, then, their, then their hearts can again swell full of patriotic pride and nationalism. One nation indivisible, Ian. Mm. It includes everyone, the humanists and uh, atheists alike. And I'm so annoyed by people that, uh, that you know, constantly online. Look, I understand y- their religions definitely have brought suffering to the planet. But do you really think that somehow getting people to stop believing in God is going to make the world that much better of a place. No, of course not. There are plenty of atheists who, in leadership positions, have done horrible things. Mm-hmm. Was atheists, Hitler an atheist? A- Hitler, no, but Stalin no? certainly was. Okay. So was um, Lenin. And the, you know, it's. I'm not trying to say that this is about atheism or about uh, theism. I'm trying to say that you are missing the mark. There is a target here, and you're looking at the birdie flashing on the side, (laughs) right? Like, okay, you don't know what the problem is. The problem is power entrusted to corrupt people, and power is always going to attract corrupt people. That's what the problem here is. The problem is saying a pledge at all, because what the pledge does is it increases this feeling of nationalism and patriotism in everybody. It gives a societal standard for it, and that patriotism gives a uh, is, is blinding to people and gives cover to corrupt politicians. The politicians will behave best in a country where patriotism is at its lowest. I totally agree. The government is a service that it... <laughs> Uh, well, that's the idea. Okay, I, I mean, parking services now it, in Keene. Okay, a service is um, they are a service. They're a monopoly that provides a service. Monopolies tend to provide poor customer service at high prices, and um, they they're they providing tend, a service that no one asked for. And okay, they, call it what you want. And they're really what they're doing is they're serving themselves. That's what the government does. They that's what monopolies you. do. They serve themselves. Understood, but nationalism and patriotism disallows people from seeing the truth about what the government does. And that 
you know, this is this is the beginning of the rabbit hole. You need to put that stuff aside. I like red, white, and blue. I like eagles as much as anybody else does. Well, you'd love this uh, website because they've got the flag right up there at the top. They, uh, in fact, the not only is the header graphic uh, essentially the U.S. flag waving, but the background itself is the U.S. flag. This well, is as ma- as nationalistic and as patriotic as you can get. That's a good point. And Mark, while they may have missed the mark on some of what they're trying to accomplish. I think they did an amazing job with this website and with this campaign. Let's talk about what they've done right here. Okay. For one, they have included a card that students can print out and bring with them to school that uh, has a reference to a Supreme Court ruling uh, saying that they don't have to say the pledge from 1943. That's educational, and it gives them a little bit of ammunition when they're going into uh, classrooms and they can say, hey, teacher, I don't have to say the pledge. And then they've got three colorful videos here on the front page, uh, just four menu item options. They've got a Facebook and a Twitter linked. I mean, they've Mm -hmm. done a really good job of organizing this this campaign. It's just a shame their their ends aren't so good. Yeah, the... the (laughs) The justification, the goal, we don't agree with it. But ultimately, if people are sitting out the pledge, that's not a bad thing. I mean, maybe no. while they sit out the pledge, they'll at some point find out more about the pledge. Maybe they'll do some research. Maybe some of the people who come across this will research the pledge and find out more about why it was written and who wrote it, the fact that it's a Christian socialist uh, who wrote this thing in the first place. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be interesting? Because normally you could call Francis Bellamy a national socialist, and that wouldn't be inaccurate, but uh, he was referred to, I think, by him, his, his own self as a Christian socialist. And so... I think it'd be persuasive, and unfortunately, I don't see a forum option here on the Don't Say the Pledge website, so there doesn't seem to be any way to reach anyone else who's interested in this, but to connect with these atheist or humanist groups and say, hey, you know, they're almost right on this Don't Say the Pledge thing. Did you know the pledge, the whole pledge, even without the under God part, was actually written by a Christian socialist? And then see what they say to that. See if they feel the same way, uh, given that you know, purportedly they're not in favor of uh, the you know the Christian religion. Would that change how they see things? Would that you know make it more likely that they would not say the pledge ever again, even if don't uh, you know under God was removed from it? No clue. I, I don't think so because they've already got the religion of the state. Just because you don't think so, you, so they would say a, a pledge written by a Christian, even though they knew it was written by a Christian. And just simply because their patriotism would override that. Yeah, that's what that's, plausible. that's what history shows me that yeah. the people they love waving the flags and going to the uh. parades more than anything. Don't take that away. I mean, even if you see that it's a it's a bad idea, or even if you see that it was uh, written by someone who you might disagree with. I mean, that has become so ingrained in culture, well, in it's tradition. Still the pledge. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's it's part of people's identity. I think mm. they've they've taken it in to themselves. And, and I I absolutely believe that's the case. It's but hard to deal with that. What, it's, what do you it's mean? It's hard to from the outside. It's hard to be an iconoclast when you're destroying someone's identity, right? When you're when what we want to do. So don't do it. Don't destroy someone's identity. Oh, we do it all the time here on Free Talk Live. But it, you know <laughs> we can get away with it because we're a radio show. It's a little bit more complicated when you're talking about someone you know and care about mm-hmm. who is in your life and who will lash out at you if you are an iconoclast in this way. People have been punched in the face over not standing for the um, the national anthem at uh, football games. Oh, Usually by strangers. Usually but, by strangers. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, this is this shows the social pressure right. that goes on. Another thing I think is very interesting is is uh, now with this, when they play the, when they play the Star Spangled Banner, people will often put their hands over their heart. There is no. There's no social standing for this. This is just people one up. This is one upmanship in the area of patriotism. You put your <laughs> hand over your, your hat heart too, right? What's that? Don't you take off your hat too? Well, you're supposed to, your hat's supposed to be taken off indoors. Your hat's taken off for for certain reasons. Yeah, but yes. people still take their hats off. Outdoors. It's fine. That well, that that's not one upmanship. Okay. That's sort of the tradition. But do you understand that they're so confused about their um their their public displays of patriotism they don't even know what they're doing they're putting their hand over their heart for the star spangled banner this is the national anthem you put your hand over your heart for the pledge of allegiance it doesn't make any sense we're coming up 855 450 free it's free talk live 
talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.03 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $330. Antiwar.com reports a female fighter from the Kurdish People's Protection Units, or YPG, has launched an unprecedented suicide attack against the Islamic State fighters on the outskirts of the town of Ain al-Arab. According to the Syrian Observer for Human Rights, the attacks killed a number of fighters from the Islamic State, though exactly how many remains unclear. The attacker was a commander in an all-female YPG unit. Weeks of fighting for Ain al-Arab has put the Islamic State on the outskirts of the key Kurdish border town and have the Kurds increasingly desperate in trying to turn the tide. The YPG militias have dominated the Syrian Kurdish territories throughout the civil war, fighting against the Islamic State along the frontier. It is unclear if the new suicide bombing represents a shift in tactics or is an isolated incident. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The Associated Press reports a one-time death row inmate now serving a life sentence for a 1981 murder of a Philadelphia police officer spoke to students graduating from a Vermont college on Sunday, encouraging them to strive to transform the world. Mumia Abu-Jamal spoke by video to 20 students receiving bachelor degrees from Godard College in Plainfield. He earned a degree from the college in 1996. Godard College describes him as an award-winning journalist who chronicles the human condition. But the decision to allow Mumia Abu-Jamal to speak angered police and corrections officials in Vermont and Pennsylvania. The Vermont Troopers Association said it showed a disregard for the victim's family at a time when the nation is seeking solutions to gun violence. 
Godard, a low residency school where students, staff, and faculty spend eight days on campus twice a year, holds 20 commencement ceremonies every year so students in each degree program can individualize their graduations and choose their speaker. Godard said students design their own curriculums with faculty advisors and do not take tests or receive grades. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports the U.S. Supreme Court opens a new term in which the nine justices will decide issues such as whether a Muslim prison inmate can have a beard and whether a man can be prosecuted for making threatening statements on Facebook. The term, which runs to the end of June, is expected to be defined by whatever action the justices take on whether states can ban gay marriage. They have not yet agreed to hear any of the seven cases already decided by federal appeals courts. Most legal experts expect them to decide the issue with oral arguments early next year and a ruling likely in late June. Arguments start today in the cases the court has already accepted. It has agreed to hear a number of cases involving people challenging their treatment by the government, whether it be prosecutors, police, or agencies. Arkansas inmate Gregory Holt's challenge to a state prison grooming policy will be heard tomorrow. Holt, who initially got the court's attention with a handwritten plea last year, says the policy violates a federal law giving religious rights to prisoners. Holt's lawyers note that 44 state prison systems and the federal government allow inmates to have similar beards. Legal experts predict he has a good chance of victory. The Facebook threat case to be argued on December 1st concerns Anthony Alonis, who posted statements on the social network in 2010 after his wife left him. The legal question is whether prosecutors needed to convince jurors that Alonis intended his statements to be interpreted as threats. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. According to a new report released this week by the Pew Research Center, a rising number of weak, emasculated men are working as stay-at-home dads, with a steadily increasing number of feeble, pathetic fayboys choosing to spend their days cooking, cleaning, and performing other submissive duties. Well, our findings indicate that more and more pussified half-men are not going to work and instead are embarrassing themselves by purchasing groceries, packing children's lunches, and denying all aspects of their masculinity on a daily basis. The Onion spoke to one of these effete, pathetic excuses for men to get his response on the new report. I love being able to stay home with Angela. I mean, it's a lot of work, but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. What a f***ing pussy. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want. We're here for you, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Whether it's the Pledge of Allegiance or your experience as an Uber or Lyft driver and how happy or unhappy you might be about that. We spent a lot of the show talking about some upset, irresponsible drivers who don't want to take responsibility for the choices that they have made. Uh, you are welcome to share your thoughts also via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Mark, you say there is a story about the federal government running some kind of a study to study the obvious, uh, apparently, which is why it is that overweight high school age uh, females are not getting dates. Yeah, from the freebeacon.com, feds wonder why fat girls can't get dates. Uh, they spend four. Are the feds fat girls? Uh, nearly a half a million dollars to determine if it's all about um I, I never mind i'm not gonna say that the federal government is spending nearly a half a million dollars to find out why obese teenage girls have a hard time getting dates the national institute of health 
awarded nearly a half a million dollar grant last week to the study, which uh, will examine whether social skills have an impact on why obese girls have fewer dating experiences than their less obese counterparts. Social skills? Social skills. What does that have to do with it? Yeah, it's the way you're approaching them. It's the way you're saying hello, right? It's not your size or your shape. I, uh, yeah, well, there's, t- <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if they said, let's do a study to find out why fat girls don't get dates, people would make fun of them, right? Mm -hmm. So let's do a study to see whether fat girls don't get dates for reasons besides their fat is really what they're saying. And I mean, I don't know. This is only for teenage By the way, fat guys aren't getting their study, you know. Why don't fat guys get dates? I don't know. Maybe they do. (sighs) Um. Yeah, I, I tend to think they have the same problem. Was this only for teenagers, you said, or high school? Or yeah, it's for it? teenagers. Okay. Um, mounting evidence demonstrates the weight influence that weight influences intimate, i.e. dating and sexual relationship formation and sexual negotiations among adolescent girls. Isn't it Shocking. an evolutionary thing? Like uh, you want a mate who has physical features that suggest they would be, be healthy. A, a mother? Fert- fertility. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I mean, and, and there's also fashion to it too. Different, you know, it, it's different times of in human history, mm-hmm. more and less weight has been fashionable. Yes. So, you know, it is what it is. But has obesity ever been fashionable? Well, if you think of the Rubens paintings, you remember going to the, uh, the, the Ringling Museum of I Art? I hated going to uh, museums. I didn't ask you a question as to how you <laughs> felt about going to the Ringling Museum. That means museum. I didn't pay any damn attention. So, no, I don't remember really? anything. You oh. went to a sc- uh, You're from Sarasota, Florida. You went on school field trips to the Ringling Museum of Art. The, um, no attention the to The largest was holder shame. of Rubens Grands in the world, and you didn't see the first painting. Brother, I don't know what the hell's inside there. I know they have a a naked man statue. All right. Was it David? It is a replica of David. Yeah, so that much I know. He has a penis on there. I noticed that as a child. (laughs) Um, You don't remember the statue. You remember the fact that Sarasota City's... uh, No, I remember that the statue had a penis, and that was very noteworthy as a child. They yeah, were the statue made that. Out that of. was one of the most notable things about going to museums yes. as a kid. What was the statue made oh, out there of? There are nudes. Uh, I didn't pay attention, man. The, All I noticed was the penis. It was a naked man statue. There's lots of naked people in this like, museum. It looked bluish or something like that. No, it's bronze. Um, what isn't bronze blue? Kind no, of no, bronze no. isn't blue. Uh, yeah. I don't remember, man. This was de- like two decades Can ago. Can you just step out and let grown folks talk about What's this issue? What's the point, Mark? Why are you bringing this up? I'm not bringing He's trying anything. to think how much more cultured he is I'm with talking his fancy about, museums. Yeah. I'm talking about fat people being more and less uh, accepted in societies at different times. And there were paintings of fat people and they were supposedly attractive? If you call attractive? the larger than what is fashionable now women in the Rubens paintings to be fat, then yes, being fat was at one point more fashionable than it is today. Well, I don't know. I saw like Mar- pictures of Marilyn Monroe, and uh, apparently she was she was a little heavy. She, but she's not svelte. The standards were different then. If like you they take, didn't have okay, the same well, foods and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and blame the standards that women are held to today on gay guys. Um, what? I, oh, right Get at the out. door. Okay, no. Well, How's that work? All right. Um, you guys have nothing to do with setting the standards for women. We're not interested. Au contraire. Uh, well, so what is the largest demographic in the area of women's fashion? Oh. Of people, creators of women's fashion. Yeah. Uh, Project Runway. That would yep. be gay men. Gay men. Right. Yeah. And gay men decide upon whom they're going to drape their clothing. Yeah. So therefore, the young women of the world who are know that the clothing is what is going to attract at least the attention of other people, yeah, see the on. models They've got that the... are picked by gay guys, wait. which who who prefer the but bodies of young men. Who's wait. got the dollars that are spending on these uh, fashionable? You don't items. see Kim Kardashian, who has got the get the junk in the trunk, the boom boom in it in it. You do not see bodies like are that. Saying, are you saying that the uh, gay men do not design big beautiful women fashions? Um, I think that there's a demand for big beautiful women fashion, and somebody will always design. Are they gay their or fashions. not? I'm only talking about standards of beauty, not about. Who designs? We're just you know no, that's you're kind talking of interesting. about cloth. You're talking about designing cloth. Yes, and, and you know I'm talking about and who you're presenting who it on. We yeah. drape that the has cloth. nothing to do with who's who's being draped. Okay, with it. sure. It Let does. me address that. Yeah, the big beautiful women models. 
are not big, beautiful women. They are just about normal sized women that they're calling big and beautiful. Yes. So once again, you have gay men calling normal sized women fat. Yeah. Okay. I'm coming down on the side that, you know, maybe we have some unrealistic expectations for the way that women are supposed to look. Hmm. Maybe you do, but I don't think you can blame gay guys for that. Uh, that's where I'm putting it. Yeah, I, I'm seeing your point more now, Mark, because it's uh, it does seem like um, there's an extra standard for gay men as well. Like you can't be average sized or you're fat. It's you have to be skinny or yeah. you don't count. But there's bears, right? The the big bear guys with yeah. the hairy chests and they're larger. Sure, right? sure, but um, they're gay. That's, yeah, they're gay. That's true. There are Mark. certainly what do you fat say about gay that? men, Ian. That there are fat straight women. That's not to say that somehow gay men have gone and assassinated all the fat gay guys. He, he, Derek is talking about <laughs> the standards to which gay men hold people, uh, you know, people's bodies. Yeah, that's a that is a cultural thing, and I agree with you, Mark. And it's. It's uncomfortable. But wait but a minute. I wish that would change. Chicken or the egg? Aren't the gay fashion designers just responding to what the demands of straight men are? I mean, if no. straight men are saying no they want, way, no? straight men don't. You want to know what straight men the want? Clothes that women wear. <laughs> you go look at the cartoons drawn by straight men, and what you do not see is a cups that are six feet tall. You see, <laughs> you see women who are extraordinarily curvy. Perhaps gravity doesn't work on them exactly. In um, you know the way it does in the real world, I'll give you that. But you see big busts, you see big fannies, you see thick thighs. Generally, that's what men want to see. Hmm. Yep. And so gay men know. are responsible for this somehow. <laughs> I don't know. I, all my Ridiculous. only claim is is that in the fashion industry, um, you'll find thinner women and very thin women, extraordinarily thin women. But who's yes, getting the I, dates. That's what we need to know. I, I think that. Uh, you know, women up to a certain size, I'm going to call it 10, um, are the ones that are getting the dates. And the ones that are above that size are, you know, experiencing something less than pleasurable um, about uh, the dating experience. You know, are, speaking of women and dates, I saw this uh, interesting video that has relevance to this discussion this week where a woman dressed up in a fat suit to meet men for dates and defrauded them, basically, hmm. pretending to be one person and then she was someone else yep. at the date. And the men were very upset and almost always uh, dismissed her. But then they tried it with a man who wore a fat suit and okay. defrauded the women. And they weren't as upset. So I'm <laughs> I'm wondering if there is actually a difference between uh, fat girls getting dates and fat guys getting dates. Um, I, okay, so I've seen a study on this, and I tend to sort of believe it is, is that um, uh, oftentimes women can be a little more forgiving in the area of looks, right? Like, you know, less hair, little extra weight. Because uh, a guy's job is somehow to be the provider. Is that the evolutionary that was reason what this, for that? That was what the sort of conclusion that was pointed to by the study that I looked at. I tend to believe that really what women want is a, a life partner, someone that will, um, you know, listen to them and love them and, and hang out with them and Aww. those kind of things. Uh, I mean, you know, so if you can provide that, you're going to be far better off. Mark's love line. We'll come back with more in moments. 855 450 free. Do you agree with Mark's suggestion? Is the Federal Reserve System a bunch of organized crooks? Ron Paul, G. Edward Griffin, Edwin Vieira, and Ted Baer discuss the Fed in the Telly Award winning movie, Fiat Empire Why the Federal Reserve Violates the U.S. Constitution. Inspired by the best selling book, The Creature from Jekyll Island, Fiat Empire is now available as a two DVD set at moviepubs.net, realityzone.com, and newswithviews.com. Talk radio generally and Free Talk Live specifically are a really inexpensive way to reach customers. All advertising is about return on investment. If you keep your investment low, you have a better chance of seeing a proper return. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations and the internet, reaching hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. 
With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of FreedomsPhoenix.com get every day. FreedomsPhoenix.com constantly providing the information, the real news about government policies, and the real relationship we all have with the coercive government. The real condition of the economy, innovations in technology, breakthroughs in energy, health, and computer science. Learn the truth well before it's admitted to in the lamestream media. The corporate media, nothing more than distributors of government propaganda, but now there's an alternative. FreedomsPhoenix.com. Constant news updates on the issues that affect your life in the most important ways. With liberty and property under constant attack, FreedomsPhoenix.com provides the understanding behind the propaganda, and it encourages the participation of its readers. Go to FreedomsPhoenix.com. That's freedoms with an S, Phoenix.com. FreedomsPhoenix.com. The revolution between the ears has already happened. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can share your thoughts here toll free at 855-450 free. We're talking about weight and beauty and what people think is attractive and has that changed over the years and who's really in charge of the fashion industry and we've kind of hit all those things within the last 15 minutes here you're welcome to share your thoughts with us at 855 450 free or join us via skype at skype username lrn.fm you do need to send a quick contact request over first once you get approved then it'll be easy for you to call us on skype from that point forward now if you care about online privacy you need to know about pro xpn your current internet service provider probably is logging every website that you visit every search term that you enter and keeping those logs in some cases as long as five years you can stop that from happening with pro xpn it's a global virtual private network and you can connect to it by downloading their software it's free for windows macintosh ios devices as well as android devices plus linux users you can get set up with pro xpn as well it's just a little bit of a different setup process with linux anyway go to proxpn.com slash ftl get started there and you can get started for free but you're going to want to upgrade to their premium account to get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world you can connect to you can privately torrent with their premium account plus get past regionally blocked websites pro xpn is a great service and you can jump right in at proxpn.com slash ftl use our discount code to get that premium account when you're ready the code is ftl50 that's ftl and the number 50 to get you 50 percent off the price of the annual account and that lasts for the lifetime of your account. You can get an even better deal by using code FTLBTC 
and then pay, you'll uh, pay with Bitcoin for the annual account, and you'll get 62% off of the price of that annual account with code FTLBTC. So don't forget the codes FTL50 or FTLBTC, and go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get a great discount on privacy that is priceless, and plus you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. As we continue here, Mark, you say there's a federal government survey or study of some sort looking into why it is that young uh, young ladies in, of high school age are having a tough time getting dates if they are overweight. Yeah, regarding right? dating and sexual relationships, mounting evidence demonstrates that weight influences <laughs> um, the formation of sexual negotiations among uh, adolescent girls. I just had to throw that in. How are they studying the sexual negotiations of adolescent girls? Is that what they said? Well, they're um, they're putting out you know, questionnaires and things like that. Okay. Obese girls consistently report having fewer dating and sexual experiences, but more sexual risk behaviors, i.e., condom non-use, uh, once they are sexually active. The conceptual framework, and I would have wait I, more. They're they're more risky. Yes. Why would that be? Well, because they feel like they've got to do, you know, they, whatever got, it takes. Yeah, they're they're a little oh, more grateful man. or oh, whatever. Man. I mean, I have had conversations with men about things like that. I've had guys say things like, you know, she's she's a little on the chubby side. She's be she'd be willing to do this behavior or that behavior. Hmm. So, I mean, I've absolutely heard that, and I concur concur with it. I mean, concur with the fact that the study is finding that. I don't know who's more likely to uh, participate in risky behavior, but it, nonetheless, the conceptual framework that has guided this research presumes the differences in the social skills for relating to peers and intimate partners among the differences in the relationship experiences of obese and non-obese girls account for these differences, the study says. However, no studies have actually examined whether the interpersonal skills and intimate relationships of obese and non-obese girls differ. Professors at the Mangay Women's Research Institute and Foundation in Pittsburgh will try to answer this question over the next four years. And, uh, uh, and half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. This really comes down to a question, uh, to asking questions. Why is the government asking these questions? You know, how come fat girls can't get dates? Um, and why do we care? Why are we putting money into this? I mean, really, if there's some kind of market for this and clearly there is a market uh, you know people that are over Americans are getting fatter all the time it's the market is in cosmopolitan they they should just read a magazine and try and figure this out you don't need a government survey you could do it in a, in a teen tabloid Who's publishing these teen tabloids? Is it gay men? Are they also in charge of that? I mean, Mark, you put the whole blame of this uh, this particular <laughs> perspective about weight and what's what's attractive on uh, gay men. But are are gay men the ones who are running the fashion companies? Is Abercrombie and Fitch run by a gay guy? I don't know if I believe that. I don't think that gay men uh, populate in their entirety in the fashion industry. I think they tend to be the ones that create clothing um that you you find very few straight men in the mm -hmm. area of fashion design I'll give you that women tend to be very self-conscious about their bodies because their body shape as we all know is very important as to how their lives are going to end up I would say it is more important the shape of a woman's body is more important um, as to how wealthy she's going to be, how happy she's going to be, and a variety of other things than the shape of a man's body. So women are rightly self-conscious about their size, their weight, their shape, people's perception of those things. Um, and I'm not calling gay guys exploitative in this area. I believe that this is just something about their perceptions. So I think... I find women, start, you know, that girls turn into women somewhere in the ages of, I don't know, 14, 15, 16, in that realm. Now, I'm never going to touch one of them, but do I find them attractive? Yes. I mean, I look at young women. There's no doubt about it. And I think that mm -hmm. straight men, when they're honest, will say that. And I think that gay men, probably when they're honest, will say they find young men attractive. 
I think that there's a lot of similarities between now, obviously fashion you models. In general. You mean in general, I'm, I'm, right? I'm just generalizing these some are people broad like strokes. Older people, indeed. Cetera. I'm talking some about people like fat, fat people. Let me yep. finish my statement. I think there are a lot of similarities between 16 year old boys that gay men might find attractive, or 16 year old young men that gay men might find attractive, and 22 year old fashion models. Hmm. I think you're talking about thin. People, thin, muscular people. You know, you're not talking about a lot of lean body mass. I think that straight men, however, generally don't find fashion models to be what they would consider an archetype of what's most attractive in women. I think straight men tend to find a certain percentage of body fat, certain shapes, you know, curvy shapes, and those kind of things that much more attractive. I think Kim Kardashian or um, you know Britney Spears or a variety of other curvy. Women are what would be considered the standard archetype for straight men. What they think is are attractive. women really looking to the you know the fashion? What do they call it? The the walk thing, the catwalk, catwalk. Or whatever. Uh, are they looking to that? To- I don't see how they can avoid it. Have you looked at these uh, magazines? Have you looked at women's magazines? Look at the covers when you go through the grocery store. They are full of. You know, well, usually they're Hollywood stars, which don't resemble the girls on the fashion not always, catwalk. Yeah. I mean, the catwalk girls are razor thin. They are really, no really doubt. thin. Um, and they're awkwardly thin and, you know, yeah. bones are showing. And it's maybe In the magazine, thin. they'll have more of the catwalk gals. Yeah, uh, they admittedly, do. they do put, um, you know, they put more stars on the, the covers. And I don't spend much time looking through these. But, Me neither. You know, I, all I'm saying is, is that you have a race to the skeleton here. It's not. It's it's an unrealistic. Is it going to bounce back at uh, at a later point? Or are we going to see uh, that that move in a different direction? You can only go so thin, right? I don't know that you will. I don't know the answer to that. I can't. I cannot say. Eric, no it's clue. all your fault. How dare you? <laughs> I, I have no credit. I didn't do any of this. How can Derek be blamed for this? He has nothing to do I'm with not it. I'm blaming Derek. Okay. I'm poking fun at you. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, There's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Are you tired of your taxes funding endless occupations around the world? Antiwar.com is run by people who understand that wars abroad become wars at home, wars on our freedoms. Antiwar.com is dedicated to bringing you the latest in news, views, interviews, and reviews from the top movers and shakers in the anti-occupation movement. Antiwar.com has it all, from thorough foreign policy analysis to interviews with whistleblowers who used to run the military-industrial complex. Antiwar, pro-free market. That's Antiwar.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls about whatever's on your mind. We're talking about why it is, well, I don't know what we're really talking about. The story originally was that uh, there's a study being done, half a million dollars is being spent to try to discern why it is that overweight uh, girls in their teenage years are having a difficult time getting dates. Uh, But it it led led into a larger discussion about the fashion industry and what people consider to be attractive and, you know, are gay men somehow ruining women's fashion or I don't really know. Women's body perceptions. Women's body perceptions. There you go. Um, So we've kind of been in a variety of different areas of this. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. And I know, Derek J., you said you wanted to go somewhere else with this, maybe? Well, yeah, sure. have been debating it. All right, so we'll get into that here in a moment. But uh, there's something else that we need to tell you about. Is privacy dead? Not if you have anything to say about it. On November the 7th and 8th, coders, privacy specialists, and idea people of all stripes will join together for Hack the Trackers a transparency and privacy hackathon brought to you by Ghostery. You can enter online or um, join us in, in person. I believe that uh, Brian's going to be there for the uh, the event in New York City to create tools that make the web more transparent, a more transparent place to help users manage how much data they share. The hacks will be judged by experts and voted on by an online community, and winners will receive a prize package including the all-new Black Phone, a secure, by-design smartphone for people who recognize a need for privacy and want a simple, secure place to start. Participation is free, and registration is open now. Visit hackthetrackers.com for more information. It's hackthetrackers.com. All right, so um, we, Mark's trying to look over here on the screen. I, I just looked up Chubby Chasers on Google, and I found an article by mattforney.com entitled The Day I Became a Chubby Chaser. And so I wonder, you know, if if overweight girls are having trouble getting dates, maybe they just need more confidence. Maybe they need to oh, find— Oh, I think the, confidence is the best maybe, uh, outfit that one can wear. Maybe they need to find the app for that. Uh, you know, maybe there's got to be a Chubby Chaser app out there at this point. It seems like there's, like, you know, I know you've been talking about Grindr, uh, Derek J., which is a, a men, gay men's uh, meeting app. Yes. And there are uh, the, what Tinder, I think, is another one for all kinds of people. So yep. there are some that are very, very niche, from what I understand, as well, where certain people looking for a certain type of person can go and find those people and either you know go on a date or just have sex, uh, from what I understand. So you know maybe there are ways for people that you know want a date and want to find someone who appreciates their body type to meet those people, and maybe they're just not confident enough to go out and put themselves out there like that. I don't think people should be, and maybe I'll catch some. Uh, um, I, I don't think people should be confident in, in being a fat person. I don't think that's a good thing. That's not healthy. And if you want a, a lifelong partner, 
uh, that is not a, a good proposition. Most people in America are dying from obesity-related issues, uh, heart disease, and, and these things are related to diet. I would I, I don't think that's a healthy a healthy thing. If you want to have a lifelong partner, you want someone who respects their their body and, and treats it like a temple. I think that um, when whether I don't I, I think it's I suppose it doesn't matter as far as relationships go. Um, I think that you yeah you're gonna have a lot more relationships if you're thin, but if you're fat and you feel disempowered because maybe you're unhappy in your life. It's not going to help you get thin necessarily. Some people, I think it will, but I think most of those people are already in a, in fit. You know, what I mean, those people that are motivated um, in that way. I think that you know, f uh, obesity can be in part caused by depression and a bad body image. Not having dates doesn't help that. Yeah, well, you change that around by changing your body image. That's one thing you could do. That's one of the things that you can control in There's your life. There's no doubt about is it. How much food you put in your mouth. You're going to you're going to be happier with your life if you uh, have a more fit body. There's no doubt about it. I 100% as a former uh, personal trainer. Yes. Yeah, but I think there's also something wrong with and you know, what could there be something wrong with someone who pursues women with a bad body image? Oh, they could very well be exploitative, um, and you need one needs to consider that. But that's part of what the study's about. Um, you know, I mean, are they are they looking for the weak and the infirm? Right? What does a predator do? Uh, a lion goes after the young, the old. And the sick in a in a pack, they don't go after the fit ones. Right. So, but what I'm saying here, in response to what Ian brought up, is a specialized app for making these types of matches. While that that might be good for sex, I don't think that's a good proposition for a long term relationship uh, where it's it's meaningful and you care about the other person. Because if you care about the other person, you should care about their health. I mean, you make a good uh, a good point, Derek J. And there's there's certainly no doubt that uh, doing things like you know getting out of bed, uh, getting out of a car, standing up, uh, these are all things that are easier if you don't have an extra uh, person of of weight on you. I mean, there's there's no doubt about that. But at the same time, if you are overweight, maybe it's because your parents fed you too much or whatever you know happened when you were fat. A, people have fat children. Uh, yeah, and you know bad habits or whatever have uh, accumulated over the years. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't. You know, not be dating in the time in which that you are overweight, and you know maybe you can change that over time. But it's nice to have company, you know, even when you are overweight, right? So, uh, so there are people that are interested in this. Uh, this is apparently this guy actually wrote a book called Big Lovin: The Guide to <laughs> <laughs> The Guide to Picking Up Fat Chicks. And this is pretty kind of a dirt. It's kind of a dirty uh, article. So I don't. I don't know if there's much that I can read from it here. Is he a predator type? Is that what Mark was talking about? Well, let's, I'm going to see if I week? can censor this as I uh, as I go through it here. Uh, he says it's time to come out of the closet. You're a chubby chaser. And there's a first paragraph. It's kind of. Uh, Something I don't want to share. Anyway, there's no shame in it, he says. As countless historians have noted, prior to our fat-phobic modern era, fat was considered the beauty ideal because it connotated wealth and prestige. Painters such as Peter Paul Rubens, who you cited earlier, Mark, celebrated curvier gals in their artwork. The fact that the overwhelming majority of artwork and glamour photography throughout history depicts skinny women means nothing because, as we all know, generalizations are wrong and the existence of a single exception to a rule disproves the rule. Additionally, the idea that skinniness equals healthiness has been debunked. This is what he's. This is an answer to uh, your claims, Derek J. He claims. I think he's full of it. He claims numerous studies funded by McDonald's and Monsanto have shown that fat people live just as long as their <laughs> twig-like counterparts. Do you think he's being serious, or is he? Uh, is he not being that? I'm not real clear. Yeah. On this. Yeah, because uh, there's a difference between curves and rolls. Okay, mm. like. When he's hearkening back to this ideal image of a woman's body being curvy, it's not the American walking out of McDonald's with six Big Macs, you know, and, and she's got rolls on her body. That's There's no shape of a human being. Uh, that's, I don't know, that's in, a distorted human being. He says, in, being. in fact, being skinny can be life-threatening. Eight million Americans, a full 2.5% of the population, suffer from ana uh, anorexia or bulimia. Anorexia kills 150 people in the U.S. every year, a mere fraction of the percentage of those who die from heart disease or diabetes. But, um, er, there's nothing wrong with being fat. All right, I don't, I'm not sure if he's being serious there. Anyway, and there's nothing wrong, he says, with liking fat girls. I know because I used to be in denial. I used to pretend that flat tummies, 
uh, etc., etc., were what turned me on. When fat girls were humiliated or insulted in front of me, I cowardly left them to suffer in silence. I kept my fetish under wraps and then shamefully masturbating to plus-size porn stars after dark. He says, I first realized I was an F.A., a fat admirer, when I was in junior high. When I was in seventh grade, I was waiting for my mom to come pick me up after school one day when I saw a group of eighth graders making fun of a girl named Vanessa. I secretly wanted to jump her bones. And she had a luscious roll of doughy flesh around her stomach, thunder thighs like racks of lamb and a balcony so big you could do Shakespeare from it. And she was really nice, so nice to me that whenever I talked to her, in short, she was everything I wanted in a girl. But I was too much of a coward to ask her out. Vanessa was frequently teased for her size, and mm. I was afraid my friends would mock me if I started dating her. That might, He might be onto something there. Maybe there are a number of people who would be attracted to these teenage girls. He's talking about a high school experience. It's kind Absolutely. of a, a vulgar article here, but maybe he is onto something here saying that he was too afraid to even ask the girls to which he was attracted out for fear of being made fun of himself. Mm. So that's possible. Social pressure could be a sure. major factor here. It's very strong. More coming up. Uh, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We can come back with more and you can share your experience as well if you'd like to add into the conversation here on Free Talk Live. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. Beautiful Bella Wood flooring just got even better with twice the scratch resistance and four times the abrasion resistance of other brands. And right now, Lumber Liquidators has exclusive deals on Bella Wood with savings up to 40%. Choose from over 140 varieties, including Brazilian cherry, American walnut, even Bella Wood's hot new matte finish that gives you that oil finished look without all the maintenance, all with a transferable 100 year warranty. So go to lumberliquidators.com today to find the store nearest to you. First ever 36 month financing is available. But hurry, these amazing deals end Tuesday. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. 
In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Enough time for your call and thoughts. You just dial in toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I have determined that this uh, Matt Forney character is definitely not a chubby chaser as he claims to be. Uh, it's uh, He claims that he has a satirical book, his Big Lovin' book, a 48-page satirical guide on how to seduce and bang obese and overweight women. Um, and the second page of his website is, is definitely makes it pretty clear that he's not being serious here. But I think that the point is still solid that he makes in at least one of his points is that, you know, maybe one of the reasons why overweight girls in high school have a tougher time getting dates is not just because uh, they themselves lack confidence, but so do perhaps the people who might find them attractive, that it's a confidence issue all around. I find that to be believable, but the rest of this guy's website's pretty rude and pretty awful it's hard to build up the confidence to ask for any date that much is true especially in high school i mean that was certainly my experience toll free number tonight if you want to share yours 855 450 free and don't forget you can join us online at freetalklive.com we've got keen vention coming up in real life you get to come out to keen new hampshire and experience what it's like to be around activists who love the ideas of freedom we're going to be focusing on activism uh, at the Keenvention. That's what Keenvention's all about. We don't bring in any big fancy name speakers from across the country. We only want New Hampshire-based liberty activists to be on stage to talk about their experience, to talk about what it's like in the legislature or doing civil disobedience and direct action. Uh, there's all kinds of different topics we'll be discussing. There's a brand new cop block panel, the new new movers panel uh, this year as well. And uh, we're a we haven't yet announced it, but the secession panel is going to be coming back. So uh, we'll announce more about who's going to be hosting that over time. And the, the latest panel, full panel announcements have been coming out recently, where initially I'll announce who the panel host is, like who the moderator is, and then the moderator has time to select their panel. And now I'm announcing the full panel. So, for instance, uh, we just got done with a Bitcoin conference over the weekend. Keenvention is going to have its own Bitcoin panel. We'll be featuring uh, Riaz from the Agora Cab. He's been accepting Bitcoin for giving people rides, uh, and he hasn't asked government permission to do so. So he's going to be one of the speakers at the Bitcoin panel. Stephanie Murphy from Let's Talk Bitcoin, she will be returning to head up this year's panel because she did such a great job last year. Daryl W. Perry, our very own Friday night co-host, uh, he accepts Bitcoin in his publishing business at fpp.cc. Brian Sovereign from Sovereign Tech, all-around technical wizard cryptocurrency guru kind of guy and then the Harvey brothers the creators of the Lamasu ATM the very the world's very first bitcoin ATM these guys are going to be there i was hoping they'd be there last year they weren't there last year. This year, we got the Harvey Brothers at Keenvention, so I'm very excited about that. It's actually the biggest panel. We're not going to have – it's going to be tough to fit them all in at the table up on stage. But uh, So we've got a, a five-person panel plus our, our great moderator, and you can see more details on that over at Keenvention.info. If you want to flash back to 2013, see what people were saying at Keenvention at the Bitcoin panel in 2013, we've got it all on video. So you go to Keenvention.info, and you can watch all of the panels and speeches from 2013. Grab your tickets for this year. It's only 60 bucks to get you in for the entire weekend, and you'll get to meet all kinds of cool people. People coming from all over the place, uh, and it's looking to be on track to be approximately the same size, maybe slightly larger uh, than last year's event. So really looking forward to this at uh, Keenvention 2014. Again, Keenvention.info is the site. So, gentlemen, any further comments that you want to throw out there on this discussion about beauty and uh, confidence? 
Well, it was brought up to me that I, I may sound uh, like I lack compassion for heavy people, and uh, I want to make it clear that that's not true, that my concerns— You were saying it wasn't healthy earlier. Yeah, I was saying that uh, it wouldn't be a good long-term relationship for a person to pursue fat people on purpose uh, for that reason, just because they're fat. I think that's an unhealthy thing to pursue. If you want a long-term relationship, the—, the best shot you're going to have is someone who is a uh, healthy weight. And this comes from a place of concern for people in my family. Like, I have people in my family who are overweight, and that's unhealthy. Um, some of them are are young. I have uh, young sisters who are twins that are 12. Mm-hmm. And who knows what their future will bring, but they're on the heavier side. And I'm concerned for them because they're entering middle school ages. Uh, there's a lot of social pressure there. Yeah, and uh, everybody gets made fun of in middle school for something, right? And I'm concerned for for my sisters, for my family, for um, people who who are fat well, and have to deal not, with that. But you're not saying uh, so. What you're saying is you don't think it's healthy to start a relationship with someone based on their fat. Yes, but uh, but what if you meet somebody online and they seem like the right person? They're overweight though. That you wouldn't want to tell somebody, oh, you shouldn't be with that person, right? Because I, I would overweight. never, I would never say that. That's a personal decision. If yeah. it's a deal breaker or not, you know, everyone has their own limits. But uh, no, I, I the point I was making was pursuing people because they're fat is an unhealthy um, way to go about relationships. You agree? With in that, my Mark? opinion, um. I because uh, okay. Isn't so here's it also what I, unhealthy to pursue someone because they're skinny. I mean, isn't that the wrong thing to 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 look at for? Well, you're going to pursue the people that you're most attracted to. Yeah, and that's where what it comes down to. Um, I mean, so there, if somebody likes chubby people, they're gonna go after chubby people. And there's nothing I'm gonna say on the radio that's gonna make a difference. I would like to say though that um. Uh, you know, being fat, it's it's going to cause you know bad body image, is um, you know per- perhaps uh, poor self esteem, maybe even depression, things like that. Like this is it's a bad state to be in. I'd also point out that being attractive has its uh, downsides too. Yeah, in the in the short term, attractive people get things better, but beautiful women, uh, the world is entirely different for beautiful women than it is for. Any other person. Sure. You know. Um, <laughs> they don't have to do anything. Shielded from reality. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I had girlfriends that would go to bars, um, you know, would tell me stories of going to bars with no money in their pocketbooks. <sighs> they had no money. And the expectation, the uh, and it was a reality, was they were going to have drinks bought for them all That's night long. That's disgusting. Well, I, I don't know whether it's disgusting or not. I'm it's disgusted. Sim- simply the reality of the situation. And that's that. I mean, I've never gone to a bar with the expectation that somebody was going to buy me drinks. <laughs> and I'm often uncomfortable when they do. Mm. So you're talking about the it's world. So disempowering, is, too. I well, mean, whatever it is, it's very empowering. Um, because, you know, I can I, go places and have people buy me things. It creates, a, it creates an attitude that is, is not sustainable. You can't sustain that um, o- over time. You're going to become less attractive as time goes by. And the cold, hard truth of the real world, the way the rest of us are treated by other human beings, is going to smack them in the face one day. And that's not going to feel very good either. I guess the reality of life is you have to trade value for value to get things that you want. And these women, these pretty women who are shielded from reality, are trading their temporary value of being attractive for the uh, temporary value of having a beer or whatever it is. And that's going to go away at some point. I see mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that, but you need to keep a sort of grip on reality. If I was looking, if, you know, if I was giving advice to young men uh, looking for a life mate or something like that, I would prefer to have a, a gal that was plain through her teens and sort of came into herself in her 20s because she wouldn't have experienced the world in the same way. I've also found that very attractive women who are from large families tend to sort of have this same view on life because, you know, their brothers and sisters aren't going to treat them differently. They're going to get treated like, you know, real human beings is the terminology I like to use. Um, But a, a beautiful person, a beautiful woman specifically, that can not... Uh, not allow uh, you know the way they get treat to, treated to affect them is a rarity. They they are a special pearl, something mm-hmm. that is so beautiful on the inside that it matches their beauty on the outside. It's rare. Well, it yeah, sounds good luck like with that. 
I, I like what you're saying, uh, Mark, that a person who experiences being unattractive during some formative years, they could become a better person for it. Uh, I, I, I would hope that that would be the case for my little sisters if they're a little too heavy yeah. or something. They're not getting dates. That would be a shame. But if they become better people because of it or if they uh, find value in, in producing music or in some other way that they can tra trade value the rest of their lives, that would be a real win. Well, losing 200 pounds is not a major – it's an, it's a major accomplishment in yeah. life, right? I mean uh, – And Rob the time Mathias, to do it is when you're young, when your skin's elastic. Yeah. yeah. Rob Mathias – uh, this skinny guy who was in here a couple of weeks ago hosting with us on Thursday night, he says he used to weigh over 300 pounds. Wow. I don't think he's more than 160 or 170 right now. Wow. And, I mean, this guy has slashed over 100 pounds off him. And, and you, when you look at him, you wouldn't think he ever weigh, weighed 300 pounds. And he's so confident now, and he seems to really be in, enjoying his life. So there's no doubt that if you can put that effort in, that that's a life-changing experience and likely will give you, you know, a real good attitude. Yeah, I wasn't fat, but I was really pimply as a teenager, like horrible acne. And so I think that was formative. You Moving know, Moving to I New Hampshire solved that problem for me. I went down to Florida this week and I broke out. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> I broke out. I'm You're a teenager like, again. Yeah, I've got like three or four pimples now, thanks to Florida. <laughs> I was there for three days. But it makes you a better person, Ian. Does it now? No, I don't think so. It doesn't really bother me, but kind of annoying. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow night. Online in the meantime, freetalklive.com. Check out Derek J on his website, derekj.me. Do you drink? Keenvention is coming up October 31st through November 2nd. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keen, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, attend social events like the costume party. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, James Robin Hood Cleveland, Rich Paul, and Free State Project President Carla Garrick will be keynoting and we'll have all kinds of panels, including the new Cop Block panel and the new Movers panel hosted by the outlaw Josie Wales. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Liberty Conspiracy is next, after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Monday, October 6th, 2014. Silver is trading at $17.03 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,196 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $330. Antiwar.com reports a female fighter from the Kurdish People's Protection Units, or YPG, has launched an unprecedented suicide attack against the Islamic State fighters on the outskirts of the